For real, for real. You're losing it. Maybe. I'm not losing <laughs> it. You're losing it, Mike. No, no, I'm just going to do my best not to overshare what right a, now. That's, I'm like really nervous going into this because I like have like all the stories with Danny and I just like very fine. We got to walk, tread lightly. <laughs> so I'm being yeah. very, very mindful about first and last names and if I want to, you know, drag other people into this stuff. But um, yeah, I think yeah. Well, we, we can we can edit out anything you want. We do it all the time. All right, cool. Yeah. yeah. And if you, and we'll if you share slip with, or, yeah, you tell us, we'll, Charlie. Yeah. And we'll, we'll, we'll share with you a cut before we air it so you can have the final approval. All right, perfect. Thanks. Yeah. But people really um, love it, you? Sasha. Honestly. People, lo- people yeah, love it. The more honest, the better. Talking. Yeah. They love the stories. Um, I don't know if you guys are aware, but Sasha's also spent a lot of time with Reno. Oh, Reno. Nice. We'll have to do another one and have you and Reno. Thanks for coming on, Sasha. We're excited. Yeah, of course. I know. I got um, I got a little You're... jealous because you guys had Olivia on, and I listened to it this week, and I was like, what the fuck, well, no. dude? I like... <laughs> I no, 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 out. but Olivia came at us. Olivia, yeah, Olivia came, yeah, because we hit you up. Olivia goes, you got to have me and Sasha on. I'm like, yeah, we're into it. And then yeah. you couldn't do it. And we had Olivia on with my friend who got shot in the hospital. Dude, that story was fucking insane. I was like, there's no way that's true. And then you guys posted <laughs> posted the story today. And I was yeah. like, oh, fuck yeah. <laughs> like, there's no, there's no excuses, man. That's fucking Dude, wild shit. Where'd you grow up at, Sasha? Um, so I was born in Jersey, but I moved when I was like five to San Diego. So San Di- Southern California girl. Oh, San through, Diego. Okay. Mm-hmm. Oh, cool. And you were living in Hollywood when you met Danny? I guess you could say I was living in Hollywood. <laughs> I was going to, <laughs> living in San Diego, going to school. I was, you know, you know, I was jumping around. <laughs> yeah. First day I met Danny, I was like, I'm, we're going to be dating and I'm moving in just to let you know. Yeah. No way. Yep. All right, welcome back to It's All Bad. My name's Keith. What's up, Keith? I'm Russ and Danny. I'm Mike. Hey, Charlie. Mike. And we have a special guest tonight we're excited about. Sasha. Hi guys, Sasha here. <laughs> hey, what's up, Sasha? Sasha, little backstory is my ex fiance. <laughs> Let's just start it off, you know. Um, I love how the ex fiance. Very, very excited for this moment. So you guys are like out. living in a yeah. U-Haul truck and you're like engaged. That's the fucking funniest thing oh, in yeah. the world to me. Oh yeah. Well, all right. Here's the best part is. I got to rehab, you know, we went to the same rehab. She got sober and then I got sober a little bit after and uh, I get to rehab and someone's like, oh man, like, so you're Sasha's ex-fiance. And I was like, ex-fiance, like, what the fuck are you talking about? You know, because that's how much like dope we fucking did. And that's how much fucking sherm I smoked. And I forgot that that happened, you know? And I was like, no, you know? <laughs> Wait, no you know you way. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. Uh, you me That's that? amazing. I yeah. I, I, you, the way that you proposed to me was the fucking worst. It was like, what's <laughs> so this guy disappears for like 12 hours, like he would do, you know what I mean? To go pick up the fucking dope or whatever. And yeah. then he, we're like squatting at our friend's house, Earl or whatever. And this place is like fucking filthy, kind of like Earl. Speaker. I've talked about Earl before, like, Asian Earl. Yeah, yeah, it smells like fucking cats. You know, I think we had our, our cats there, the three of them that we were dragging around that were like, it, it was it was gnarly. So I wake up and he's like gone for fucking, you know, six hours and I'm in a panic because I'm fucking detoxing or whatever. I need my fucking dope. And then he like shows up eight hours later with a fucking ring all sweaty and shit. And he just <laughs> literally proposed to me while I'm laying in like filthy ass fucking bed. And he went down. <laughs> In the a room that just like, reeks of fucking cat piss, you know? No way. It's so bad. Yeah. Yeah, All this can be yours, baby. Of, baby. Yeah. yeah. Just like, um, just and then here was my dirty. thinking where I was like, fuck, Sasha's going to leave me again, you know? Because this is when we got back together, you know? I was like, she's going to leave me again. How can I make her not leave me again? And I was like, oh, I got it. I got the perfect fucking plan. I'm going to get a ring and I'm going to propose to her. And then 
and then she can't leave me, you know? Oh, I right. hated the ring too. I'm like a very fashion girl. Even in my using, I was very much into fashion, you know, whatever street, fucking tweaker chic, whatever. Um, but I fucking hated the ring. <laughs> well, wait, tell them what, tell them what we did with well, the ring. Huh? Tell them what happened to the ring. Um, I think like a week, not even a week later, later we ended up pawning them for 20 bucks <laughs> for a hit of fucking uh, methadone. To go no. with for methadone. methadone, not even mm-hmm. dope. Not <laughs> even dope. We couldn't come up no with enough. Way. That's how weak my, our hustle was. We couldn't even get enough money for a fucking dose of methadone no, at the sir. clinic. Yeah. I think we got more than 20 bucks, though, for it. TBH. I know. I don't know how much you spent on, on the... If you actually, did you actually buy those rings, or did you steal them? No, I bought the ring. Okay. You did? Oh. I don't know how I bought it, you know? <laughs> don't knock your hustle, though, dude. Like, you were a fucking hustler. There, you know, we got along good four years i think just on your hustling i mean i didn't do shit so you were hustling for the both of us yeah like you would just lay there and make fucking clothes and fucking do weird projects you know now what was your thing what was your thing sasha what was your drug of choice oh man like towards the end of course like heroin and math brought me to my knees you know but like we would just do everything under, under the rainbow you know i love like at one point it's like pcp fucking GHB was fucking huge, like ecstasy, co- whatever, you know, just, just oh, whatever. But towards the end, yeah, more, more everything, GHB. everything. Yeah. It was, the, I mean, it was nuts. What's the worst experience you've ever had from a drug, Sasha? Wait, what? What drug gave you? Did you have the worst experience on? You know what? It's hard to say. Meth, you're just like so fucked up out of your mind. Of course, I think meth is like the absolute worst, right? Yeah. But I think I got like the most stuck on cocaine, like when I was like younger, you know? Oh, like smoking it? Um, no, just, just snorting it. But I would just be so freaking paranoid that I would be like, so I'd be like doing it at my parents' house or whatever. And I would, you know, my boyfriend was living at my parents' house at the time. Um, but I would be doing lines in the middle of the night and like staring like underneath the door of my, my bedroom door <laughs> out into the hallway to see, I'd just be there for like eight, like six hours, like just stuck there. Like even on, you know, when I was using meth and shit, like around, you know, like towards the end, like I wasn't getting like that. I mean, there was like dementia and like paranoia and shit, but like not like that physically, like actually stuck. <laughs> That's just, like pretty painful. Um. I'm trying to think bad experience, you know, cause I, cause it, this is great because like, I remember stuff that you don't remember, you know, <laughs> you, you got uh, to do PCP I, together. Oh, we did a lot of PCP together. Yeah. What about when you got a, what about when you got caught in fever? I'll have the two different times that I got caught in fever and I called you both. <laughs> <laughs> and Did and we weren't talking. We were like the second time, like we were like in a huge fight. We're not talking. And Sasha calls me freaking out, crying. Uh-huh. And Danny ends up coming through, which is a fucking awesome. But, you know, I actually drove, I drove yesterday, I was driving, not yesterday, but a few days ago through Sunset. I think I told you, and I was just like every, like from like Rock and Roll Ralph up until like there's this, um, uh, what's it called? Like a storage unit place. Every single block, like Danny and I had done something fucking crazy. Oh, um, really? On it. One, okay, so this is the the playhouse. Is that the one that you're talking about, or the one? Oh at the my god, house? no! I forgot about the playhouse. The playhouse. So, so us and a bunch of fucking Hollywood fucking little junkies were like would would jump into places and fucking you know stay in there. And we found a really cool playhouse off of what street is that on? It's on maybe Las Palmas or Cherokee and uh, and Sunset. School. Yeah, by the music school. So yeah. somehow we like wiggled our way in there and found this fucking awesome, like awesome, like furnished little like building. And it was like super artsy. There's a bunch of fucking paint, like all kinds of like cool shit happening. The whole playhouse is like an auditorium that's like abandoned. Like we were just no chilling way. in there. Like, yeah. It was yeah. like a theater. Yeah. It was yeah. abandoned. Abandoned. When you yeah. say playhouse, can you, can you explain that for the folks at home? So the playhouse is it's a theater. So if there was like little separate rooms. Um, there was a giant. Oh, stage. you mean a playhouse? Like yes, a real, yes. like, okay. Yeah. You were. I was like, hey, what's a playhouse? Like, is that sound <laughs> fun? You guys, is that like a drug? Like, we're gonna set up a dope house and we'll live there. No, I see. Yeah, I know what that is. Okay, cool. Got it. 
<laughs> yeah. yeah, there's an abandoned one there. And um, I mean, it's just all the same fucking shit. You know, like every time I would get sick, I would call Danny, no matter what situation that we were in, like how big of a fight we were in, you know, I'd fucking pull the tears and he would show up like a superhero, you know, and yeah, it's funny. It's like I, when you're get caught in fever though, too, like you can't shoot it up. You can't shoot up heroin. I would always have to smoke it. And that would like relieve the pain, the, the fucking, you know, the fever faster than actually shooting it up would. Remember that, D? Yeah. That well, no, but I, yeah. yeah. But I, but I just found out, you know, recently and don't try this at home. But I mean, if you got cotton fever, then you might want to try this at home. Andrew, uh, whatever. I'm not going to say his last name, you know, because he wants to come on. But he just told me that when you get cotton fever, the way around it is you bang a shot of straight milk. I mean, we've done Gatorade, do? right? I think we've done Gatorade. I mean, what? what, what oh, is- we've definitely shot up meth with Gatorade. I think that was like yeah. a phase that we went through, you know? Yeah. yeah. Uh, different flavors. I mean, not really, you know, but oh, we yeah. thought we did, you know. <laughs> but, hey, but it's got, hey, but it's got electrolytes, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Can you explain for the listeners? Controlled what by humorous? electrolytes. Yeah. <laughs> Control Fucking what? Yeah. Explain what? What? Explain to the listeners what cotton fever is. One of you guys. All right. So cotton fever is basically when you're so when you're shooting up, like a lot of times you'll use the same. You'll save your cottons, you know, like when you're not like a like a high bottom junkie, you know, when you're, but when you so you save your cottons. So when you run out of dope, you can kind of rinse your cottons and do like one good shot of the cottons. But now the problem with that is when you're stirring around the cottons in the water and you go and you dry it up, sometimes fibers get caught in the syringe. So then you go and you inject, you do your shot and you get some of these fibers in your fucking veins. And it's basically this, like you feel like you have like you're dope sick plus you're about to shit your pants plus you're like about to die all at once Ooh. and so there's no good. way around nice. it. No, no, Mike, it does not feel nice. Okay, that sounds like it feels really not nice. Yeah. <laughs> that does not feel yeah. nice. How long yeah. wow. does that No, no, Mike, that does not feel <laughs> nice. <laughs> worst feeling ever, hands down. Oh, like, my worst goodness. Worst feeling ever. You feel yeah. like you're going to die. Really? You know, some, I, I, feel like, I feel like when you're coming down, whatever, when you're detox, whatever, like withdrawing, like, heroin addicts always overreact it's never really that bad like you got a little bit of a fever you know what i mean but we're so fucking dramatic like fucking need that shit but this is like you feel like you're gonna fucking die it is like insane your whole body just like gets super super hot um oh my god at the section eight housing one when he when you came of course daniel comes like a couple hours late but um yeah the section (laughs) eight the section eight housing that was the one that i was thinking of you know yeah, that, that place was fucking gnarly. Um, remember I ran, were you there when I ran that super hot bath? I accidentally, it was like burning hot water. So like when I went to get in it, like it was scalding hot. So I had like my legs all sprawled out, like holding myself up because I, cause it was too fucking hot. But I was like fully clothed, you know what I mean? But I'm like sprawled over this bathtub, like fucking shaking. It was, oh God, that shit was such a bad. I don't like, know if you're It's there, like when you, tr- you know, it's like when you try to bathe a cat and like you put it in and it just like puts its fucking body, like that's what it, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, that's what it was like. I'm like 88 pounds too during this time, you know, like it was, uh, it was fucking sick. Um, I don't know if you could flash pictures, but Danny, feel free to, you can't post that picture, but you can flash that picture of me if you want, that fucking okay. hospital one. Um, uh, that that shit is pretty crazy. It's a It's pretty sad, actually. But um, yeah. but yeah, don't don't do drugs, man. It's yeah. Fucking, Wait, fucking so sad. let's go. With, the playhouse was a squat that you guys found. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We, we, we found one of all many. different kinds of squats. Yeah. One of many. Well, you know that that apartment building, the Vita. You know that one on Wilcox. It just caught on fire yesterday. No way. Oh, yeah. man. That was I mean, the one, that was the one where, where we thought we the dead guy. You remember I told the dead guy story that wasn't really dead, you know? Yeah. That's where that yeah. building just caught on fire. Well, didn't we squat at two different places there? Yes. Yeah, we squatted yeah. in one unit, got kicked out, and literally remembered that I had keys to another unit downstairs. and Or no, we hopped in the balcony and got keys and then just moved downstairs after literally the sheriffs evicted us out of a unit. Like sheriffs came, the management came, they kicked us out, and... Six hours later, we're downstairs in another apartment in the same building for like another three months, you know? No way. 
Wow. Yeah. You know, the, crazy, the crazy part is like we befriended these people before they ended up. So one guy, we promised him we would ship him all of his stuff. Like we would Edibles. get him cleaned out. Yeah. You know what I mean? We would like, we would take care of him. And then we ended up just like staying in that, in that apartment and never leaving. Yeah. yeah. Pops came there. And then the, what happened uh, to the guy downstairs? I don't, what happened you, to that kid downstairs? Because well, there was thought, this like. We thought he was a super dead, nice you know, little yeah. shy, shy kid. What happened? He just like, did, he literally disappeared. Well, he owed me a lot of money for cocaine. He owed me like $340 and I owed merch. And then merch was like, yo, you got to go get that or something of equal value. So that was when I tried to hop in the, up the balcony. Well, I did. I hopped up the balcony and got into his unit and there was like moldy food and maggots. And we're like, oh, fuck, there's a dead body in here. But it was just empty. It turns out that fool went to rehab. His parents just were like, pulled him out of there and like shipped him to fucking rehab. Dang. That's crazy. Yeah, we, we trashed that place too. Wow. We, we trashed yeah. it. Wait, and then we had one across the hall. You remember? The one that was being remodeled and we like got the fridge and the stove and everything out of there and then tagged it up. And then yep. we're like, oh my God, who's a... And then the management or like the cleaning people would come and we'd be like the maintenance, whatever. And we'd be like, oh my God, like who's, a, who's over there? They're making a lot of noise. Like all front and like it's not us. Like they know it's us, you know? <laughs> they know. Oh, man. Um, that's like two of like the 30 places that we stayed, but we, we got along pretty, pretty decently until like the last couple of years where it got like, we just, we used up everybody and everything around us. It's kind of crazy. Um, I mean, I I don't know. Oh, fuck. I, I, I wanted to make a list of like key point stories, you know? Um, Cause we have so many, like, I mean, we could do a fucking, you know, we could do like a four part fucking mini series just, you know, Oh, and then we both ended up at CRLA, you know, which is like a whole nother fucking crazy story, you know? Mm -hmm. And like work yeah, together I at a fucking record label for this rehab that like got shut down, you know, which whatever, we'll get into that at some point. <laughs> <laughs> it's a miracle that, that I didn't hit on you, Sasha? Dude, I have the craziest story about him. I was super close with 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 him, with Batham. Like, like one of his right hand girls. Like, my family went to my dad. Like, gifted him a painting, and my family went to dinner at his, uh, you know, at at his house up in the in, in the fucking Woodland Hills or whatever that nice ass area. Um, I was like babysitting his daughter, like taking her to dance classes and driving her around, and I was like her personal assistant. It was like pretty crazy but i can tell you that bathroom never hit on me i mean he might have tried to open stuff up but i was just like i was just not sorry dude I'm just not you know what i mean like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nope. keep your fucking pink fucking dandruff fucking creepy dude. ass away from me <laughs> worse dandruff worse dandruff you could see it from like from like a mile like literally from the back of the room you could see him and that foot shake thing that he did in that that head thing that he did oh, too. Yeah. That oh, really so crazy. bad what really, kind of, what's really the head thing? What's the head thing and the foot shake? What 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 is that? I'm fascinated. <laughs> it's it's math. <laughs> yeah, it's math. Oh, yeah. So basically, uh, the, the the owner of the rehab we went through ended up yeah. being on math and like having. So that's like, not know, good like, either, right? See, that's yeah. another thing, Danny. That's not good. Yeah, not good. Yeah, <laughs> I got it. That, I'm yeah, learning. You, you got it now. <laughs> And on top no, of that, I'm getting, I'm picking up speed, dude. I'm pointing shit out and stuff. This is yeah. good, good, nice. But anyway, yeah, that sounds bad. Yeah. And then on top of that, he ended up having like he was basically hooking up with female clients that were at the rehab, you know, with like. Oh, more so than he's one. a real arch fucking piece of shit demon. Oh yeah, the worst, you know. And like, then also, hey, like, look, I'm the in a largest... place where people are super vulnerable. Uh, I'm gonna prey on them and use it against them. Yeah, one hundred percent. And then he has the he had the biggest uh, insurance fraud case in the state of California history. In the history, yeah. you know. I mean, no, I just it, nothing with me specifically, but like, I, I can't even like we can't even talk about this stuff because it's super sensitive. You know what I mean? But okay. I, I was I was in a well, I was in a female treatment center, right? And I'm up around, you know, like at female houses, and I. I'm not dumb. You know, I was a house manager for a while. Like I saw shit that was going on and was happening, you know? Um, but let's just say it just was like, it was kind of a madhouse, you know? Did it and it was pretty like, messy. Did um, he seem like he was on methamphetamine when you saw him? I just thought that that 
what he was like because yeah. he was kind of always like that, you know. Um, yeah. Here's the yeah. the craziest like, I, thing I is it's that's... like we heard it, you know. I mean, I'll speak for myself. I heard it, and I had people telling me like, "This is happening. This is going on," you know, like people that I'm now friends with, and I was like. Yeah, right. Like they're just trying to get some money out of this dude, you know. Think about all the people he's helping because he did help a lot of people, you know. Fuck, like yeah. I wouldn't be sitting here today. Fucking Reno wouldn't be sober. There's a lot of us that did get sober through that place. You know this, Keith, you know? Yeah. And then uh and so you hear, hear this shit and you're like, maybe they're all just they have like ulterior motives or something, you know? And then I don't know, it was like we drank the fucking Kool-Aid, plain and simple. You know, it was but like that's it was, also yeah. what makes it fascinating, right? Like, yeah. like, like all those people who like the most successful of those con artists are fucking talented, gifted people. Like, I don't know what they've said about, you know, the some of these motivational guys, Tony Robbins. You know, shit keeps coming out, and now it's like everything just comes out, and 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 who knows what 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 you know what it all means, but but like. I think that's got to be part of it. Like you, you, people who are like super captivating and super interesting, uh, you know, and, and, and maybe super passionate probably can be super manipulative too, you know? And then the next it, thing you know, it, you get an audience of people who yeah. are just looking for help and then, and then you fall prey to it. It's so weird, but yeah. fucking fascinating, man. It is fucking fascinating. Now the weird yeah. thing is, is that that dude, he was making money hand over fist. He just couldn't get enough money, it seemed like. He was, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, it has to be money, right? Like, why the fuck would you do something like that? Mm-hmm. I, those guys know him better. The thing, but... the thing that's crazy, though, is like, if I, if he didn't do that insurance scam shit for me, like, give me, like, sign up for me and stuff, like, I would have never gone into fucking treatment. Yeah. You know? Right? It's, it's See? wild. It's like, okay, that's like. crazy. It's, yeah. it's, it's really weird stuff. Um, and yeah, like we didn't, yeah. I mean, he gave us a safe place to stay. It's kind of safe. I don't know. Like it could be safe if you want to, but if you were into like weird shit, then it like is definitely not safe for you. But I mean, yeah. I stayed there for a good year, year and a half, you know, um, and really got my footing there. It's just like, it's just it's kind of crazy. You can have, everybody can have different experiences in a place. And, you know, a lot of the people that work there, like, we're really good, really amazing therapists, like yeah. good foundation, but the guy at taught he was just fucking nutty, you know, he couldn't get enough of the fucking the high. Some of the girls God, I know all those bad stories. Some of the girls like shot him up for his first time and that's when he overdosed. And there's actually like footage of him being carried out of the uh the hotel um at the oh, bottom Malibu, of the right? Malibu Hills or whatever. Yeah, yeah. So, and but we could all recognize it by by his fucking shoes because he would always wear always wear the same shoes and shit, <laughs> suit pants. Even in, even in the sweat, like, even in the sweat lodge, that motherfucker would wear his fucking dusty ass jeans and those shoes in the sweat lodge. Like, who does that? You know, <laughs> what a fucking freak! Like, if that was, if, was that, that should shit? have been a red flag on its own. You know, who wears fucking was jeans? It two, was it the two sisters that shot him up for the first time or no? No, who are um, the two sisters? Not, they're dead, they're sisters, dead now. No. But... Sash, these guys haven't seen the the uh, 2020 episode, I don't think. You have it, right, Charlie? <laughs> no, I started reading the book. Yeah, I started reading that book that dude wrote. Um, the, but I haven't seen the 2020 episode. You should. You guys should both watch the 2020 episode. It's all on there. Yeah, that was at the that was at the towards the end of it, and he just like was so. I don't know, just like in a, I just, he was thought he was so right, you know, that he was like, sure, bring these fucking news guys right into, right into the mess of it. And it just is so blaringly obvious that this guy yeah. is fucking high. He's like inviting them in, you know, he's just like loving it. Just his ego was just like thriving off of it. You know, he had us like make mugs and t shirts and shit um, that said rehab mogul on it. <laughs> so That's Danny amazing. and I literally were like, making the graphics and shit. <laughs> so bad, house. yeah. With him yeah, him bad. sitting in his fucking Tesla with the fucking roof up, flipping off fucking the can like I mean it's nuts. DJ still has one of those mugs. Oh, really? Yeah, it's like so good. Item. Yeah. Yeah, because that was in the article. That was like the article was called Rehab Mogul. That's what it said on the front page of the uh, LA Weekly. So he flipped it and was like, "Fuck it, I'm going to use this to fucking market myself, you know?" He's nuts. He's nice. Um, hey, Sasha, what's the worst experience you've ever had on PCP? 
sorry, you guys cut up. The worst experience that I had on PCP. Or, I or the lo- best. I loved, I loved all my experiences on PCP. I'm like, I don't think I had a bad one. Um, but somebody really? explained it to me. They're like, it's kind of like fucking Xanax, you know? Like, it's, it, Xanax is like a little bit of K. I don't know. That's like kind of, that's like. <laughs> what? Wow. It, it was perfect. <laughs> I've had a Xanax. And I've had that PCP the one time, and the Xanax didn't make me almost go out the window. Here's the thing: I think we just had really good PCP. You know, like yeah, there's something. About, yeah, yeah. Because every there's, I mean, we haven't had anybody else come on that's been like, "Oh hell yeah, I love PCP." Like, not one motherfucker has been stoked about PCP. You know? Danny, yeah, wait. Do you do you have a bad experience on PCP, or did you mostly? It was mostly chill. I mean, besides pulling out that gun and almost killing some people like that was kind of gnarly yeah. you know <laughs> i've told that, that one you know, with the gloves with the gloves you know yeah dishwashing um, gloves right yeah yeah a different different sets of dishwashing gloves uh all right the be- the one okay the one bad one i had you know and you were there for this was and i've never told us on this so this is good um when we rolled a jeffrey do you remember that oh yeah Oh yeah. So a, your, Jeff, your a Jeffrey, the term the the term comes from the movie uh the popular early 2000s mid 2000s movie Get Him to the Greek, you know, I don't know when it was uh-huh. made. Yeah, but the Jeffrey is basically when you Amazing. take all the drugs you could find and you roll them in a blunt okay. and smoke it. So oh, we got this wow. bright idea where like I had like hash oil, I had wax, I had keef, ah. I had I mean, we had mushrooms, we had like pills, we crushed up some like fucking oxys, we put like meth, we put crack, we put, we literally rolled everything in this blunt, you know? My God. And then we were like, we got to dip it in some sherm. And this is when I had a lot of, like, because I tried it once, I tried like a sherm stick and I was like, wait, what's the next increment that I could, like, what's the next amount that I could get? And he was like, oh, a gram, like it was like a little gram vial, like those little coke vials, you know? So I got one of those and like three hours later, I'm like, wait, what's the next amount? He goes, I don't know. I've never heard anybody ask for more than that before, you know? <laughs> and I'm like, well, what do you, you know? So we got an ounce and then like an ounce of PCP, you can probably dip like a hundred Sherm sticks out of it, you know? I can't even imagine how much that is. Yeah. I mean, it's a lot, you know, it's a lot. Of, and like, you know, who was, who do we have that was talking about? Was it a, uh, who do we have that was talking about that was like, oh yeah, live like who's smoking it wet, you know? Yeah. And that's what we would do. We would dip it, you know, and uh we would dip it and fucking light it. And we were doing that with the shirt with uh, Jeffrey, you know. And uh so after we we put all the drugs, we roll them in a blunt, and then we dip it in the PCP. And we go to smoke it, and we were like, Hell yeah, this is gonna be great, you know, like this is gonna be so awesome. And uh oh, Bruce, uh my friend brought her dog over to say hi to us and brought us some uh okay, take some your veggies. Dog, take your podcast. Are you guys staying inside? Oh my god! All right. Vic, now I got to go back outside. You know, this is really a lot of work for me today. Um, hold on. I got your can. You got the can? Oh, thanks. Yeah. You want the coffee? Yeah, I'll take the coffee. Fucking a. <laughs> well, how about how about you guys, Keith? Have you tried? Have you guys tried PCP? I want to hear your story. Oh, uh, I have. I mean, it was fucking awful, though, Sasha. I had smoked it. I was in, I was in a boys' home in Silver Lake in the 80s Oof. and uh i went on past with this friend of mine tyrone de la rosa to hesperia like the high desert <laughs> yeah and we had smoked it with his uncles but i kept hit i never smoked it before i kept hitting it and hitting it you know what i mean <laughs> and uh, and i just couldn't remember my name i was like face down in the bed in like a holiday inn and <laughs> fucking victor it was awful for hours you know tyrone and then you had to go de back la it was a yeah. Yeah, first and last names. You guys are great with that. <laughs> <laughs> I That's went a on a wingding trying to find him because I figured there's probably only one person named Tyrone De La Rosa. God you ever damn, that's him? a great no. name. I mean, it's just the a most, um, it's a great name. It's Ty- kind of beautiful. So, it's, it is. Yeah, it takes boldness to like be like, all right, my last name's De La Rosa. What are we going to name this kid? Tyrone. Tyrone, no, his dad, his Tyrone dad was a Tyrone right. What's that? His dad was a full on cholo. I know. 100%. So I like to think like Tyrone, it's like he must have had an uncle, or maybe it was an emotional connection to the name, but it's a fucking amazing name. Um 
Yeah, he. Uh, but he was also the 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 star of the Marshall football team. I've told you guys all this. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. He was in a boys' home of a. Uh, you're you're talking about a school with thirty five hundred kids, right? Yeah. The most popular person in that school was a kid from the boys' home named Tyrone De La Rosa. Hands down, the most popular. Wow. Hands down. He yeah. was like fucking Vinny he Barbarino. Was popular because he, he was, was popular like Vinny Barbarino. <laughs> Dude, nice. Uh, no, he, um, um, Sash, he was the, the fucking, the, the, he was built like a man. He was literally built like Bo Jackson, but he was the star of the Marshall foot. You know, Marshall, that school by the Monday night meeting. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Right there on Rowena. Right there in Silver Lake. On, yeah. on Rowena, yeah. Or Hill, he was uh, the, Hill, uh, yeah. St. George. He was, the, he was the star of that team. And yeah. you have to understand, like, I, I'm sure it's the same today because that boys' home's still there. But we had to, everybody from the boys' home, we had two picnic tables that were reser- reserved for us. And we had to hang out there, like, at lunch and at break. You know, we weren't allowed to hang out with other people, really. Wow. So it was and just still, a school for boys. It wasn't like a like a sober home. You said it was just a like a like a school. You said? No, it's a boys' home, like for troubled kids, like you know, like guys that once you get out of camp or juvenile hall, you're a ward of the court if you don't have anywhere to go, or they think you're. Oh, so that makes sense. Okay, so you're like the coolest kid in the boys' home. That means like, yeah, you're smoking sherm with your uncle. That <laughs> no, 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 that that wasn't it. It was totally. They thought the the staff at the boys' home thought he was the most perfect human being on the planet. You don't understand. Like, they never knew about any of that. We came back from the past, and they're like, everybody, I'm telling you, I, I wish I could track down the dudes that I was there with. Anything that happened, they'd be like, that's Tyrone, what he would do. I'm not kidding you. He was like, <laughs> and meanwhile, I go on a pass with him, and dude, it is mayhem. I mean, we were smoking weed, snorting crank with his uncles, drinking beer. Smoking Sherm. It was, this is a 48 hour period. Saw like <laughs> rock, you know, fucking, um, you know, First Blood Part Two or whatever, you know, Rambo or some shit. Like, uh, we got to make a, we got to make little bracelets, like, you know, merch idea, make little burst bracelets that would say, what would Tyrone do? Yeah. WWTD. Honestly, God, this is before the WWJD thing. This is in the 80s. What would Tyrone do? Just ask Tyrone. I don't think he'd lose his temper over something like that. <laughs> Shit like that. Wow. Uh, so, um, all right. Yeah, so Wait, what so happened with through. the Jeffrey? So we roll it, and it was like, you know, maybe six of us sitting there, and we're, like, so hyped about it. We're like, man, this is going to be so tight. Like, we're, you know, we dip it in the sherm, whatever. We, we spark it up, and we're like, we're going to get so fucking lit. And we put, like, drugs that you don't smoke. We put mushrooms in there. We put meth in a blunt. Like, you don't smoke these drugs, right. with, you know? And it literally made it, like, one rotation around, you know, like, one good rotation. And then it got back to maybe, like, me or maybe Mike or somebody, you know? And they, like, looked at it and, like, looked at, you know, I remember, like, the look you get where you're, like, I'm cool, you know? And then everybody else is, like, nah, I'm <laughs> fucking good. Like, I've had <laughs> enough of that yet. <laughs> and keep in mind, there was probably, no like, way. I mean, there was probably three, four hundred dollars worth worth of drugs in this fucking blunt alone, and we're like, nope, like not doing it, you know. Everybody that might have like, been the yeah. that might have been the only time I would I said no to a drug, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you were just like, this is not going to be good. Yeah, no, this it's, is not. Yeah, that's amazing. <laughs> yeah, um, Sasha, what about? Um, I was thinking about fuck. what about uh, what about Valentine's Day. Uh, which, which one? So, <laughs> dude, so I'm doing like, I'm doing my, um, my alcoholic history. Now I'm restarting the steps in AA and I'm like trying to move linearly through like all of this and it's just fucking crazy. But if it's the Valentine's Day that I'm thinking of, it's, so I was like, I was jumping in between Danny and another guy, my, my ex-boyfriend Steve a lot. Yeah. So and when I met point, Sasha, like, when I met Sasha, her boyfriend at the time had just gone to jail. Like literally like a day or two prior, you know, okay. he caught a charge. And then I met her at that house that I talked about when Joe was on here, that crazy fucking house that was like by MacArthur Park, that mansion, you know? So I meet Sasha there and I was like, oh my God, she's gorgeous. Like it's on, you know, she's a junkie. She doesn't have anywhere to stay. I'm like, this is a match made in heaven, you know? <laughs> it was like, perfect. It was perfect. Yeah. 
I had a house, you know, like it was, yeah, that was, that's, that's it. Destroyed everything in? That was, yeah, yeah, that was a house that went, but you what's weird what? is I had my own place, you know, like that's when I was living behind, um, Charlie, time code this and bleep it out. That's when I was living behind, <laughs> yeah, bleep him out. Um, so, that, so, but I had my own place, but I would just go and like stay there for like extended periods of time, you know, just cause it was fun. There was a hot tub there. Like there was always people like tweakers, you know, there was a bunch of weird shit. That's the first place I ever smoked Shermat was in that fucking living room. That's the one where you guys stole all the instruments, right? Yeah. I didn't. My friends did. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I plead the fifth. <laughs> oh, I swore that place was haunted. Oh, it is. Oh, haunted it was. Stuff haunted yeah. stuff like a few episodes back and i was just like <laughs> did you yeah, know that, about- that place go ahead eight people sold. <laughs> yeah i don't know if i've ever told you this story but this um fuck we gotta have him on this friend of mine phil you know he's newly so this is so long ago it's like it was in those apartments though phil needed a place to stay and this dude andre who i don't think you guys know but he's a guy who's kind of in and out of the program who's got like he's got a, a wooden leg you know oh yeah i know andre you know him right yeah. So Andre used to live in that building, right? Phil was looking for a place and Phil hit up Andre or Andre goes, Hey, there's an apartment available. Dude, that a three bedroom apartment in Silver Lake was $1,200 a month, right? Wow. That's how long ago it was. But anyway, so Phil moves in. It's the one below Andre and Phil's uh-huh. like, you know, chilling and shit. And then he's just, you know, he's newly sober and shit. And all of a sudden, like the middle of the night, he just hears pounding upstairs, you know, in Andre's apartment, like, <laughs> Right. And what had happened is he figures out is when, when Andre's at home, he takes his leg off and he hops around the house and he's, a, he's <laughs> oh not Colonel. God. He's not Colonel. So uh, he, um, he'll be up for fucking, you know what I mean? Like he wasn't loaded, but he'd just be up for like 15, 20 hours. Anyway, wow. that's my story about when that. I, when I, so wait, he'd be, he'd be just hopping around. Well, he was doing, you know, like writing songs and, you know, fucking. Yeah, doing you know. stuff, but also, yeah, and hopping around. So he, did your buddy have to move? No. Oh, my God. Here's, I can't believe I almost left out the best part of it. You know what he did? God, you're going to, yeah. you know him, Danny. It's Phil. Yeah. The painter. But they, it's driving Phil nuts, but he doesn't want to say anything because uh, Andre <laughs> got him in the past. So he gets Dave. Um, fuck, what's his name? He's a lawyer now, Dave. That's incredible. Fuck, what is Dave's last name? Anyway, he gets he trades Dave a painting, and Dave frames the whole apartment in six inches, and and soundproofs it, and boxes the windows. Think no about that. way. Yes, the apartment became eighteen inches smaller because <laughs> really in all the walls were framed in six inches by these guys. He framed the walls in Stone to insulate. insulate. Yeah. Wow. That's incredible. That's one way to do it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We have we should have done that. Maybe maybe I still would have the place. I was paying eight fifty for the one bedroom guest house in the back with the private yard and parking in Silver Lake. And this is what nine years ago you know that's crazy so wait sorry so back to we we wrecked that way we were were remember we painted the toilet gold and we were picking up all the hardware of all the fucking doors thinking that they were like worth something and i yeah (laughs) i was polishing all i had like a little dremel and i was like polish off because they just painted shit over you know like yeah like they did LA. but it had like really cool old fucking door handles and like you know and i would just fucking stay up for days like tweaking getting all the fucking shit off with like steel wool and the dremel and wow. restoring it you know yeah and then i'd be sitting on ebay trying to figure out trying to find these exact ones to know what they're worth you know no way so crazy. you know what's really crazy is i literally threw those things out like not even maybe like a year ago i think i've had what? them up the year. <laughs> yeah, we had them in our storage. There, there yeah. dude, we I had them in our storage that we also lived out of for, I mean, for a bit. Wait, you yeah. guys would sleep in the storage? You still have that storage unit? You yeah, that? well, not that one, not that unit, but I, I moved everything to a smaller unit upstairs. You that's slept that's in a storage unit right? together? Yeah. No shit. That's <laughs> kind of romantic. What? How did that? How does that work? Well, when you're, you know. When you're busy fucking running and gunning and getting yeah. drugs is your main priority. Yeah. Sometimes you you know you come up enough to get the dope and to get the needles and to get a pack of smokes and a pookie, 
And then you don't take into account that you don't have a room for the night or a sublet or whatever the fucking other <laughs> missing part of the equation is. So we would literally like go into the storage, wait for them to sh- close, you know, and then we'd open the door, like we'd shut the door and they would do their little walkthrough, you know, and then we'd pull like this little like pull out couch into the hallway and we would just chill there and get high. No way. Yeah. Like it was your pad. Yeah, Where'd you we go definitely- to the bathroom? No, uh, you didn't. I didn't. We didn't really go to the bathroom. When you're high, you don't really go to the bathroom. That's that true. Yeah, you're not drinking you're right. water or eating, so you're really yeah. not. That's really. I mean, wild. I fucking. That's weird. I couldn't pee standing up, you know, for fucking. I don't know how many years. Like, it took me maybe a year into sobriety until I could pee standing up again. You know. Wait, why? Why? I don't know. I think opiates, but usually it's just shit. But for me, like, I could not piss standing. I don't know. Oh, at a certain age, you give it up. Uh, uh, (laughs) at a certain point, there's a, there's a time where, where, where a gentleman needs to know when it's, when it's best to sit down. Um, and, and, and just, you know, I, I just call it taking the fifth, you know, sometimes (laughs) you just gotta like, listen, if I'm, if I'm in a public men's room and there's, there's really not the option then we'll, we'll deal with it. You know, we'll, we'll, we'll face that part of, you know, it'll be fine. It works out. Everything's fine, but but if the option's right there and comfortable, uh, I, I'll be seated, please. Yeah, but uh, Mike, keep in mind, I was 28, 27 <laughs> years old at the time. <laughs> I'm go to the bathroom. Hold on one second. I'm, I'm, I'm just I'm here. I'm in your corner, Danny. So all I'm yeah, saying, all right, buddy, I understand. <laughs> <laughs> I get it. No, I lost the video <laughs> on the iPhone. Can you guys see me still or no? Yeah, yeah, I'm just oh, staring at my damn there. recording of myself talking alone oh, yeah. in this room like a fucking <laughs> mental patient. <laughs> you, just, you can just flash in your favorite photo, your your sexiest photo of yourself every time your voice comes up. How about that? That's kind oh, of like yeah. a Zoom, a Zoom just meeting. A, just a nice picture. Danny, of I want to. Yeah. <laughs> Danny, I want to hear your perspective on on Valentine's Day that day. <laughs> oh, I want to hear your story on it because you have a better memory than me with this stuff. But right. I want to Is hear Keith here? Or no, I, I can't want... see him. Or did he step aside? He went to the bathroom. Speaking yeah. of bathroom, all, right. all that I kind of want to wait. All that sweet, uh, all that sweet. <laughs> Keith, Keith's like, a, Keith's like, I gotta go pee sitting down. <laughs> I, gotta I gotta go, go try this out. Down. See what all the hype is about. I, mean, I would love to know what it's like peeing standing up. I think I probably, I probably did it when I was younger, when I was a punk rock chick, and I was like, you know, drinking forties and pissing behind venues and stuff. But it yeah. never ended up very, very good. So I'm all about sitting down. I'm all that. I do visualize Danny passed out sitting down on the toilet peeing, though. I think. Oh, yeah. I think I remember that somewhere in my memory. Yeah, I'm sure it happened. I'm sure it happened. Fuck. <laughs> Where's Wage? Is Wager back? No, uh, not no. yet. Where, where are you from originally, it. Sasha? Um, I'm originally from, I was born in Jersey, moved to San Diego when I was oh, right. like five. So, Southern California. We're going through. When did you come up to L.A.? Yeah. I came up to L.A. for school when I was 18. Um, uh, actually, it took me eight years to get an associate's degree. It's fucking crazy. But I did it. Great. It's a variety. Yeah. I finished my two Woo. school two years, two classes. Nice. Um, but yeah, I struggled at FITM, Fashion Institute of Design and Merchandising. And uh, yeah, man, you, you go sober. It's so different. You're like shit. School like is not that fucking bad, man. <laughs> it's like really not. It's actually kind of fun. So it is expensive. Huh? Um, yeah. Oh yeah. Wait. I gotta grab my phone charger real quick. Hold on, because my phone's about to die. Okay. Fitum's expensive, huh, Sash? Yeah. It, it it ends up being a pretty penny for sure. Um, but it's a pretty good school. I mean, it's better if you don't if you don't drag it out eight years. You know. Um, How long? Very industry to... based. Sorry, you're breaking up a little bit. Oh, how long yeah, is this kind of... supposed to take? Two years. No. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, you got nothing to be. You got nothing. Yeah. To be, don't say that quietly. I <laughs> I stabbed at a college degree for about eight years. It seems like, and and still came away with uh with uh with some nice relationships but i don't believe there's a piece of paper with my name on it so you know oh you didn't even graduate mike what's that 
You didn't even graduate college? I'm sorry, what's that? You didn't graduate college? <laughs> no, sir. <laughs> oh, no. I didn't know that. It's all about yeah, relationships. No, it doesn't matter. I <laughs> probably haven't told you because it's such an embarrassing thing to say now as an adult man. But no, no. No, as soon as I like wrote a, I wrote this movie and it went to Sundance and then I was going out there for show business. And as soon as that happened, I with about four credits or six credits to go was like, well, I've got to get out of here now. It's got to happen right now. And, uh, and, and, and was listening to every friend who was like, and, and, and like in the end, it, it really, I mean, I guess maybe it did. Maybe like, that's how I wound up getting a manager and that's how I wound up getting the, you know, the fucking half ass career that I had. But, but you know, like, to look back at it and to look what was really achieved as in those years. Like I feel like I probably could have stuck around for another semester, you know? Uh, yeah. But I also was working with buddy and the, and the campaign was coming up and I was like, Oh, this is going to be a shit show and I need to go. Like, I just need to get out of here. And I had this, uh, and I don't know, I had a weird feeling about things. And then I also just had, and I, whatever. I, I wanted to go take advantage of something, and you know, I had people telling me that was the right move, and I listened. Because whatever, dumb. But anyway, point being is, it doesn't really fucking matter. But at least you yeah. got it. Hey, yeah, um, it's more ahead. of like a an emotion, like a like a esteem builder, you know. Yeah. As opposed to, and then that's how I ended up getting the job with Reno. You know, I was working in treatment for a couple of years. Um, which is freaking crazy, man, working in treatment. I mean, it kept me sober, though. What's the craziest thing you've ever seen in treatment? Oh, you guys, this is not, like, a funny story. This is, like, a sad story. Um, I've never seen a dead body in my whole entire life. Like, all the crazy shit that I've done, the people that have overdosed, like, but um, I saw a dead body. Like, a kid had snuck out of uh, the treatment center at night, and I was a tech, and I came back, and in the morning doing my rounds or whatever, my little checks. And he was like unresponsive and yeah, that shit was fucking crazy. Wow, that's heavy. <laughs> Sorry guys. Wow. <laughs> no, something. that's real. That's the reality of this fucking disease, you know? Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Have you ever seen anything really funny? Like some tweaker going crazy at the rehab or anything? Oh, oh yeah. All kinds of stuff. Um, <laughs> I, can't, I can't even the stories like, Dude, there's this one girl who's gonna I'm not gonna say her name, but like every time she would do heroin, she would act like she was on on like meth. Um and she, or like or like Xanax or something. So it's really strange. Because you know people are normally like really chill or they like to sleeping. You know, they're harmless and they're on fucking yeah. heroin. They're just like fucking zonked out. Like this girl was just like noodle arms, noodle legs, just like licking people, you know, just like like the most sexual little kitten like ever and i was just like i've never seen anybody act like that on heroin before it was fucking trippy but i mean she's hot so it's fine i was like Esther, okay huh? <laughs> like you're super cute hey i said it yeah. fuck it i'll say it you know i'll just say <laughs> you didn't say it i did <laughs> I can't fucking danny <laughs> i just had to guess you know but uh all right wait real quick back yeah. to valentine's day valentine's day okay I want to hear it from your end, and then I'll speak on it because my memory is shot. Again, okay. don't do drugs. So Sasha, when I when we first met, had a boyfriend who had went to jail for some set amount of time. I don't even know. What do you get busted for? Selling drugs? I think so. Yeah, who knows? Exactly. Whatever it was, you know? So I met her, and then we moved in together, and then shit, my dad <laughs> passed away, you know? And, like, shit got really dark. Mm -hmm. I, like, completely lost my fucking mind. Like, I started slamming fucking dope and slamming meth. I, I wasn't doing dope for a little bit, and then I started doing it again, and, like, doing insane amounts of meth, you know? I didn't realize until I got into treatment, like, between me and a good friend of mine, we were doing about, like, anywhere from a quarter to a half an ounce every day, you know? Ooh. Just the two of us, you know? What? Yeah. Oh, like, in insane of meth, you know, and oh, then geez. with heroin and yeah. whatever else on top of that. Like, I mean, it was yeah. just nonstop. Like we would get a new pookie. We would pack a fucking gram in there. We would light it, take a few hits and then would like go on and chase yeah. the next one and do that until, you know, until we couldn't fucking stay up anymore you know, for, you know, days on end. And, um, so I like really lost my shit and it got like, I mean, like when I first had that house that we were talking about, like 
it was a place where like, you know, like we would come and like do creative fucking projects, you know, and just like do like the <laughs> shit the tweakers do, you know, and I would just have all these people over and like, you know, like, well, like some of them were fun to hang around with. Some of them were like the worst people you would ever want to get high with. You know, we would go to like after hours and invite everybody over after and we'd have like DJs on a laptop, like doing DJ sets for us, like well-known DJs at no this way. fucking little house. Yeah. And by the end of it, it was like literally just me. Nobody, like none of my friends, like they were scared to come over there. You know, merch was the only one where like he would stop by and make sure that I was still alive, you know, like, like just to make like that. Cause that's how dark it got. Like nobody could even fuck with me just because I would like be like, oh yeah, I would invite people over or whatever. And they'd get there. And like, so like I, w I would leave and then I'd come home and I would invite somebody to the house and Sasha would be sitting there with my like childhood best friend. And I would be like, what the fuck is this fool doing here? Like, who the fuck let him in? I know you guys are hooking up. She would be like, dude, you told him to come by. And I'd be like, no, I fucking didn't. <laughs> Rocco, what are you doing? You fucking piece of shit. You know, I mean, it was just insane. Like, come, like, you know, who, who Danny, wants to hang around Danny, with that guy? Uh -huh. Danny, I totally thought that you and Rocco were hooking up because I came in to the room one day and Rocco's pants were fucking down. And I don't know, I just like the paranoia. I don't know what it was, but I'm like, I swear to God, these motherfuckers are hooking up. So it's like you were literally thinking I was hooking up with him too. So funny. <laughs> <laughs> like, no, 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 no. You were hooking up with Rocco. <laughs> no, Rocco would every Rocco would do like a shot of meth and then he would just rip all of his clothes off. Like he was just one of those dudes where like he could not be clothed anymore, you know? There's I have a always photo. one. There's yeah. always one. Oh, yeah. just gotta be like, whoa, why, yeah. why, what are we doing? Why are we doing that? Okay. And, I have a know. Yeah, I have a photo from that day, Sasha, where it's him with his pants at his ankles wearing a bandana, <laughs> pre-COVID, you know, just wearing you a bandana, send me. passed out. Yeah, I'll send it. I know you got gold. You got to send all that shit to me. I love it. Oh, yeah, I'll um, gladly send okay, it. Okay, story. Valentine's Day. Let's hear it, D. Come on. So Valentine's Day. Um, so Sasha and our mutual friend, Carrie, got an apartment in Hollywood, and I was still in Silver Lake, and uh, then Steve got out of jail and he moved in with them, you know? Mm. And then I somehow found out, somebody told me where they were living and I was like, oh, fuck that. I'm going to go show up over there. So I would just like show up uninvited to this house where like nobody wanted to see me, you know? And they would be like, dude, you got to go. <laughs> and I would come in and like start shit. And I'd be like, I knew this is where, you know? Like, I mean, it was just like, it was bad, you know? It was bad and it was yeah, really yeah. dark. And like, and then I felt like abandonment from all my fr friends, quote on fucking quote, you know? like. <clears throat> I'm like, I gave you guys drugs for so long and housed you. How dare you go somewhere else, you know? <laughs> and uh, How about when you would send, you would send different people to my door too? Because you weren't, Danny wasn't allowed there. Like it was, it, it was, it was. The manager like knew. To, yeah. Danny. yeah, we loved Danny, but it's like, dude, Danny, like, you know, stop. Just fucking stop. Just chill. And he just like could I could not, not for stop. the life of him. So stop. one of the things, so all right, wait, I'll, this will be like a little preface to the Valentine's Day story. So. I couldn't go over there, right? Steve gets out of jail. He's selling dope again. And like, I'm still selling dope. So now we're like competing, trying to sell dope to the same people, but I'm getting better dope, you know, but it's just like a whole back and forth thing. And uh, when Steve, uh, one night I knew that Steve re-upped because we were getting drugs from the same drug dealers, you know? So literally like somebody just came to them, dropped dope off to them and then came to me and like I re-upped. And I was like, where are you coming from? They're like, uh, and I'm like, you just came from fucking Sasha and Steve's, huh? And they were like, yeah, I did. You know, I was like, God damn it. You know, I knew it. I was like, I, you told me you're not going to serve them anymore. Like, you know, like there's no loyalty in that shit. So, um, so I call, I get my friend, this dude comes to me, not whatever, not a friend, an acquaintance, you know, he comes to me to pick up some dope and I get this genius idea where I'm like, Oh, I'm going to send him over there just to like scope out the scene, you know? So this dude comes to me like completely dope sick. And I'm like, I don't have any dope, but I have a friend in Hollywood that does, you know? So I send this fool to Hollywood and keep in mind, let's just paint a picture of him. He's kind of like a sketchy looking white dude, but he had court that day. So he was dressed up in like full court, like, uh, you know, apparel, like, so he has a suit, a tie, whatever, you know, still sketchy looking, but like, you know, like when you get dressed, you got to dress up for court, you got to look fly, you know, like, so the judge will think highly of you or something, you know? So, um, could you guys hear me? Yeah. 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 Right, right here. Yeah. So I'm like, dude, there, I know this guy, it was, I remember cause it was, uh, 
Maybe it was after Valentine's Day because it was St. Patrick. It was a, another holiday, St. Patrick's Day, because we were like walking around Hollywood and it was weird. And he's like about to shit his pants. He's sweating. He's like, dude, I'm so sick. I'm like, oh, we're going to get there. This guy will take care of you, Steve. He's great. He's a buddy of mine, you know? And uh, and I knew that Earl was at that same house, right? So I'm just like, yo, just walk up to the door, knock on the door, say, hey, I'm a friend of Earl's. I'm here to see Steve, you know? So this dude comes up. Nobody there knows him. You know, like not a single person in that house has ever seen. And he's wearing a motherfucking suit, okay? A not, suit. Not like, <laughs> yeah. Our place has been yeah. rolled. We've had undercover people, like, at the end of it, our place got fucking rolled. Remember fucking Trisha and her boyfriend got rolled there? So yeah. this motherfucker's in a, in a suit, dude. We started freaking the fuck out. But so somehow really, he would yeah. manage to get his way in. Somehow no, no, no. Wait, no, I don't no. know. No, because he was like, oh, I'm a friend of Earl's. He was like, I'm here to see Steve. I'm a friend of Earl's. And he's looking. No, no. I don't think he did get in that time because you guys are looking through the peephole and Earl's like, I don't know this fool. Nobody knows him. And he's saying he's a friend of Earl's because that's what I told him to say. So he, you turned him away. Yeah. That <laughs> and I ended up Earl. getting him well because I had dope. And Steve flushed all of his dope that night. I remember this vividly because he thought it was the cops, flushed everything. And then called me to pick up for me like an hour uh, later because he was sick. No you know, So that's like, yeah, that's how fucking, that's how psycho I was. Oh, now I see you guys again. There you are. <laughs> so intricate. Yeah. Dude, that was your plan the whole time. Oh, yeah. I yeah. I, I felt like I was like a tweaker Jesus where I was like, I could just control <laughs> everything and everyone, you know, like a, like I could like put all these dudes where I need them to be and do all this like weird shit. You know, it was, it was insane, you know? So valentine's day you know sasha has now left me and is living <laughs> with her ex-boyfriend that went to jail <laughs> they're living together and i'm like and i'm like i have to do something romantic you know i have to give her a valentine's day present you know this is my best thinking so i um at the time i was still making edibles and i would always like i was pretty good like from like a like a marketing fucking advertising standpoint so i was like oh it's valentine's day we made these things called reefers peanut butter cups you know where they were like peanut butter cups but like Reese's but with weed in them so we call them reefers so I was like oh we're gonna make white chocolate we're gonna add red food dye to it so we're gonna have like pink fucking peanut butter cups and all this shit for Valentine's Day and I went around and I dropped off a bunch of orders and like made a killing and then it was Valentine's Day and I had some stuff left over and I was like and I had this dude that would just drive me around like I knew all these tagger kids that would have cars and I'd be like hey I'll pay you in weed or I'll give you a hundred bucks a day to drive me to all these dispensaries and this dude drove me around and then it was like, we were done. We made the money. I paid him. And I was like, wait, I have one more stuff to make, you know, and I can't go in there. You got to go up, you know? And so he was like, all right, word, you know? So we go to the apartment building on fucking Cherokee. He parks outside and I'm like, all right. And I, I got some roses along the way, you know? So I got some roses and then some of all the weed chocolates and maybe like a fucking stuffed bear or something. And I got one set for you. And then I got another set for Carrie and I sent mm -hmm. this little fucking Paisa tagger kid to the fucking, to their door. I'm like, all right, it's apartment 11 upstairs or whatever fucking apartment it was, you know? And I was like, it's upstairs. Just knock on the door, you know, say you're there for Sasha, you know? And, uh, and they knock on the door and sure enough, fucking, um, the dude, uh, like Steve opens the door and he goes, who the fuck is this? You know, like, what are you doing here? And, uh, and he's like, oh, is Sasha and Carrie there? And he's like, what, who the fuck is this? And he was like, well, these are from Daniel. Here you go. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's awesome. Dude, no way. Yes. I don't think I ate any of those either. I was just not interested in, in anything that had to do with weed at that time. I, like, I thought you were yeah. going to say not interested with anything that had to do with me, but. <laughs> oh, oh, no, I love the game, Danny. No, dude, I like how oh, that was shit was fun man jumping back and forth and at one point danny steve and i were all living at the same airbnb together just us three no like way. living together there yeah, yeah no, these got kicked out. no they got kicked out uh they got kicked out of that place in hollywood a few months later because steve lost his job so steve had a job whatever i'll tell this real quick steve had a job he was a chef and like a fairly successful chef you know so he would go and where was he working at a hotel or a restaurant like i don't even know where he worked on the west side yeah, yeah. so he would leave for work and this is like after, like once I got my foot back in the door, you know, so he would leave for work at like eight, eight thirty, you know, I would like make my way in at like nine. I would spend oh the day there until like five thirty, five forty five. 
then he would be coming home and I'd be like, fuck, I got to get out of here, you know, but I would time it because this is how much of a little cocksucker I am. I would time it so that I would be coming <laughs> down the street as Steve is coming up and I, and like he's coming home and I'm leaving his pad, you know. <laughs> <laughs> this oh, is making man. me really uncomfortable. I'm yeah. very uncomfortable. <laughs> so I was just like, "Fuck!" I hope Steve don't listen to this shit. You know, <laughs> Steve, Dude, I just recently made an amends to him, and he's been hitting me up. He's like, "Dude, I'm in LA. What's up?" I just like have not responded yeah, nope. anymore. I'm like, you know, made my amends, whatever. He he went to jail, and he's sober now a few years, and he's got two kids. Oh, that's great. Star, uh, think, but, yeah, With yeah, but. Time. I was re- I was really resentful towards him because he like whatever he stole some laptop that my mom gave me like th- five days before I got sober you know and then like helped me look for it and this whole thing you know and uh, and I was like super resentful for a long time and then it's weird because I was I was just telling you this like you know and um because y- you get to a point where I'm like dude how many people did I rob and how much shit did I steal like if anybody deserved to get their shit jacked it was me yeah you know? like yeah, you I'm do bummed. I'm bummed at like my yeah, mom. <laughs> Like I'm bummed that my mom went out of her way to buy me this thing, you know, and like, and I couldn't even ever use it because f- my birthday was on the 30th, 4th of July, the fucking computer was gone, you know, and Steve stole it. But when we have like a little, you know, at the end of the meeting, like when you pray for like the alcoholic that's still suffering, like I prayed for Steve for a long, you know, for maybe like fucking months on end. Like I would like, you know, every time I'd be like Steve and whatever his last name is, you know, and like, and then you tell me that he's been fucking sober for a while and he's doing good, you know? Yeah, I mean, it's well, crazy. I I thought he literally died because I couldn't couldn't find him. He just all of a sudden, you know how that happens yeah. when doing your men, yeah. things fucking pop up. Mm-hmm. He just like magically appeared. I'm like, oh shit, he's still fucking alive. But Danny, literally speaking of stealing shit, would stole my phone. Okay, but what about the time you drop kicked my laptop into your TV because you were so angry? <laughs> I did that. Yeah. Do you remember? No, that? no, 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 no. I kicked I kicked your one laptop into your other laptop. Into my TV. own TV and broke <laughs> all three of them. <laughs> Wait, and then in like full med psychosis, I was like, oh my God, I got to make this right, you know? So I knew these like weird well. tweaker fucking, uh, I knew this like tweaker iPhone repair store place. So I took, it was like two Mac, you remember when they had like the black and the white MacBooks, you know? And yeah. she, it was one black one and white my, white one. And I was like, yes, I need yes, you to, yes, I do. I was like, yeah. I was like, I need you to combine both of these and make like a stormtrooper a fucking MacBook, you know, or like, because one had a working screen and the other one had a working keyboard, you know? No And then way. they lost the hard drives to both of them with like all of Sasha's shit on it. It was a fucking nightmare, you know? You got that, actually that laptop ended up working. Oh yeah. It ended up being, it ended up working. And that I came in there, I came in there when they were closed one night and I was like, you motherfuckers like i like bang on the door and they opened it and i closed it and locked it behind me and i came in there like you motherfuckers like i you know i'm not gonna say what i had on me but i had something on me that made them be quite intimidated by me you know and i was like you fucking lost my girlfriend you know she wasn't even my girlfriend at this time you lost my my maybe my fiance's laptop like you gotta make this shit right And, and i sat there with these fucking tweaker fucking crazy asian fools in this iphone repair shop for like eight hours with them checking every single hard drive in the place until they found hers which they like mixed in their pile of 900 fucking hard drives you know and it worked. Oh, you said behind the scenes uh, things that I didn't know that you were doing. I yeah. had no idea you were doing yeah. crazy shit like. And Sasha's all mad at me for being gone for eight hours. Like that's why I was gone. You know? <laughs> but uh, so Sasha and Steve get kicked out of that place that they had on Cherokee. You know, and I don't know. I, did Carrie move in with Mike already at that point or something? Probably, huh? I don't know what happened. Yeah, I think she was thinking about it. Yeah. Yeah, she moved. So I don't know what happened to Carrie, but I still had that place in Silver Lake and. You know, I hear that they're getting evicted and all this is going on. And I'm like, hey, I mean, I still got a place. You guys want to move in with me? So now it's me, Sasha, and Steve all living together in fucking that same fucking place where, like, I kicked her laptop through the thing where, you know, whatever. Like, now we're all, like, living in, like, one big happy family, you know? (laughs) That's amazing. Fuck. Dude, I totally wow. forgot that we were staying at that fucking house. And we also stayed that oh, at yeah. the Airbnb, too, I remember. We stayed at a bunch of Airbnbs. Yeah, there was always, like, somehow it was us three. A couple other people, too. But somehow it was like, this weird love triangle fucking yeah. thing. So oh, weird. Oh, man. So weird. Um, and then Steve. Uh, stories. And then, do you remember when I got Steve beat up that one time? 
Nuh-uh. No. <laughs> yes. What happened? Uh huh. When he was living by, uh, when Art had that place in Silver Lake, or no, in Echo Park, by where my old storage was, the one on Glendale. And he had that little house rental thing. And Steve, like, robbed somebody or he did something, you know? So then Art found out, somebody found out about it, and they told, they got this big Samoan fool to, like, run up on Steve and sock Steve in the head. Like, he literally, like, came to cop, and I was like, Steve's on his way, you know, because I'm, so Steve is, like, pulling up. There's a Samoan fool that pops up, just fucking decks the shit out of Steve. Steve, like, as he gets hit, realizes that obviously I'm the one that fucking set him up, you know? So he waits in the car for me to come outside, has a briefcase with all of his drugs, you know? And we were doing, like, lines of, like, fucking coke and xanax like crushed up like i mean insanely like fat fucking like it was insane you know he waits for me to come outside runs up on me and like uh like literally like tries to pistol whip me but he was so high he couldn't like fucking whip the pistol right and then spits the blood in my face that he just got no fucking way. because he you know because he just got socked in the head well what he didn't take into account was he fucking did this across the street from a fucking it was either an elementary or a junior high. Oh, no. And this fool's outside swinging a gun, like, you know, like in fu- broad daylight. Like, this isn't in the middle of the night, you know? I don't think school was in session. But <laughs> moral of the story, cops show up. Steve gets busted with the oh, fucking, fuck. with a dirty yeah. gun and whatever, you know? I somehow was way out of there at that point, you know? Um, That's and crazy. that fool's jaw ended up getting wired shut, and he was in jail that whole fucking... <laughs> term yeah. with his jaw wired shut in county fucking jail that's, uh, dude, that's I'm so proud of that moment <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> well not no you know <laughs> <laughs> not <laughs> He's like, just a little bit just not little no bit. you know sasha have you ever um what's the longest you ever stayed awake um seven days seven to ten i don't remember Damn. your memory gets really fogs up when you're like in a small room doing the same shit for a long time but i think really? Danny, i think why i feel i'm <laughs> fine i haven't had i haven't i haven't, I haven't had a, a, a fucking a whiff of meth in two decades <laughs> and i'm about to lose my mind in this fucking house right now uh anyway sorry sorry about that just walk Walks, walks help, and fa- FaceTiming people. You got to get your camera working. I do do that. I do right do that. And walk is good as long as no one comes near me, and then I have a panic attack so profound that I would collapse oh. on the ground. He's so he's so freaked out about this coronavirus shit, Sash. I'm he sorry. You should have seen him. He had a guy deliver <laughs> weed the other day, and he wouldn't let the guy. How close did you let him get, Mike? Like thirty feet. No, I mean he was cl- he not close. He, I didn't want him to. I just wanted him to leave it. Just leave the stuff. <laughs> leave the business. Like we're doing it. Leave we're it on the it. doorstep, right? Yeah. Yeah, we're on credit. And he was like, "Oh no, I need you to." Oh, yeah, I'm not doing that, bro. I'm not giving you my card. I'm not touching your shit. Like, what are you talking about? Listen, I don't want to fuck around, bro. Shit's getting wild. Out there. <laughs> <laughs> everybody everybody is processing this shit com- completely differently it's so crazy so you have to be very like respectful yeah. Yeah. well i also take about 60 like milligrams of fucking prozac to be able to control my ocd and and mm. so right now the idea of like you know yes i have a fairly elaborate intake system forgive me but it's what but, about uh cra- that's, craft- that's crafting. the way it's going to be. Been good. <laughs> oh, yeah, crafting. Start crafting. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> I could, I'll craft, I'll craft a shit out of something. No, I, I'm, uh, I, I, Filofax. Filofax. I'm getting <laughs> Filofax. I'm getting a model boat delivered, which I'll have to de louse and sit outside for 72 hours. Um, uh, but I am getting, I'm getting a model boat delivered that I'm going to make. And what was the other thing that I was going to do? But that was the only one that I got done. I ordered that model boat. Um, and that's you it. Haven't, you haven't been anywhere in public, right, Mike? Nope, not in five weeks. Not even to the grocery store? No, sir. Only delivery. Groceries? Oh, okay. I, uh, yummy 
brings them to me. And uh, <clears throat> and they, I, I do no contact delivery. And you wipe the bags down with alcohol and shit? I actually, uh, so what I'll do is, a guy like me, I'll, uh, I'll get those bags with gloves up until right now, because now I'm out of gloves, so I'll have to use plastic, uh, other plastic bags. But uh, I'll get bags, I'll bring them up onto the landing, I'll pull out a bunch of stuff, and anything that's non-perishable or non-essential, um, so in other words, not vodka, um, uh, is, uh, no, but anything that's, you know, yeah, like anything I don't need right away, uh, but that is also non-perishable, stays out on the landing in, in a staging area for three days. And I just write myself a note of when that when that happened, and then uh, and then the rest comes in and goes through its uh, through a, a fairly elaborate wipe down thing with a with a you know soap and water wash for all vegetables and and per, you know natural like vegetables and fruit, but uh, but everything else gets uh, pretty much sprayed down with a uh, highly toxic bath uh, spray. Wow. Cleansing agent. Well, there's there's six hours of your day, so you just got to figure out what to do with the other. <laughs> You've no, and, then and then there's and then there's and then there's of course the the delousing, what I call the silk wood afterward when uh, when I when I when I go into the shower and you know. Oh really? See, I don't. Well, me and Danny were talking about it. like how long are we supposed to run from this shit because you know it's going to be back next year. You know what I mean? No, yeah. I totally know that. I know that. I'm just afraid I'm going to get it and I'm going to die and it's going to be like a, one of those horrible 70s movies. Yeah, <laughs> I hear you. you know what I mean? Where I'm straight up boy in the plastic bubble and like you fools can't visit me. And then it's sad yeah. and you're going to have to listen to all those Smith songs at my funeral. I've, I've, I mean, already, I've, I've, been, I've been working on my will. I did do that. I put. Oh my god! No, it's just a, well, it's just a sticky note right now. But most of it is a play, most of it's a playlist for the funeral, and it opens with yeah. the intermezzo from Cavalleria uh, Rusticana, uh, which is by Mascagni, which is great. And you know who who sang it the other day was uh, was what's his face? Uh, uh Yeah, Bocelli sang it. Sang that song. Uh, in the yeah, in the uh, in the Duomo in Milan. So anyway, and does, wait, and it does it on any part of your playlist is the "It's All Bad" intro fucking song. Yeah, make an appearance because <laughs> that's what I can see. You know, fuck, I, I want to. Oh go, no! Uh, <laughs> oh, side of the road. No, side of the road is totally there. Side of the road is there. I got some. Uh, I got some good things. Uh, Free, what got, about, dude, I, my shit would be like Freebird, you know, fucking take me out with some Leonard Skinner <laughs> Freebird, baby. <laughs> yeah. No, I have, uh, I do have some good, I have some Too Short on there. Oh, uh, hell yeah. Which is fun. Which I was just thinking, I, I, in, during the grimmest times, I've been envisioning, you know, myself just lying in that casket. And uh, and then being like, you believe it, the COVID nineteen took him. But then no one's going to be there. And that's all. Blow the whistle. Doo, doo, yeah. Doo, doo. yeah. And, and it's just like, These are the tales. These are the tales. these are the freaky tales that I tell so well. Hey, Sasha, this girl, have you ever seen a have I, you ever seen a ghost? Oh yeah, have you seen? I'm sorry, you don't want to hear me re recite too short. You know, like that. Let's ask. Sorry. Well, I, I want to hear about when Sasha stayed up for 10 days. Yeah, me too, that, but also goes. <laughs> uh, okay, so the 10 days is very uneventful. It's like, this is like not, it's not even funny, it's just sad. Um, Danny, we were staying at another Airbnb off of um, off of Western, I think. Do you remember? And it was like close to that, that chicken wing place. I don't know. Um, no, I think when that I was just the room that I rented. Oh, no, that was an Airbnb. Yeah, yeah, I'm still friends with that guy on Facebook, room. too. Yeah. That You're was cool. friends with him? Uh, whatever. Yeah. Anyways, I, I just smoked a shit ton of meth, and I was, like, I would always be crafting and stuff. That was, like, kind of my deal, you know? So I, was cutting, I would cut out letters of magazines. So Danny can attest to this, but I would have, like, 
I would carry around with me everywhere like bags of paper with just like magazine rippings and inspirational photos and stuff. So I'd just be for 10 days, I would be punched over it, just like cutting letters out and spelling out different things. And that was that was my 10 day. Yeah, um, making ran- yeah that's called making Wait, ransom what? notes. Yeah, that's- <laughs> <laughs> was it like poetry? What were you writing? <laughs> It was like, yeah, I guess it was. It was just like some like dark poetry and things like that. I had like a little clothing line that I was like into and that I made all my friends kind of like wear clothes and stuff. Um, so yeah, I don't know what it was just to fix any little tiny thing. Like, you know, you're tweaking out. You're just like walking down the street. You see like a tiny little like piece of metal on the floor, yeah. you know, like I just like would be collecting all that shit too. Like it was just, I love shit. our storage shit. unit was a yeah. mess when we started cleaning I that shit I love shiny yeah. shit. Uh, Have you ever seen a ghost? (laughs) That's why I always love you, Keith. I swear (laughs) to Christ. When you say those things, I'm like, God damn right. I understand what he's talking about. Dude, I do. That shiny shit is nice, man. (laughs) My wife wanted wanted, um, some raised uh, vegetable boxes, you know, raised garden boxes. Mm -mm, mm -mm. And there was just leftover two by fours under our house, you know, from whenever they redid it. Dank. And they're not that long. They're like two and a half feet long. So I started pulling yeah. them out. I'm like, all right, I got to connect these things. Dude, I had four these weird like L brackets, you know, like metal L brackets. I had four of them in the garage. No, just like some kind of stainless. But I'm like, where are these come from? And I realized I was shooting at Sony and we were shooting by the carpentry shop and somebody threw them away and they're brand new. And I was like, they were just bent a little bit. I'm like, fuck, I got to take those. I did that sober. <laughs> Hell yeah, man. I'm like, I'll straighten them out in the vice. <laughs> God damn it. That's what a vice is for. Have you ever seen a ghost, Sash? Yeah. Um, I haven't seen one, but I felt one. Um, in Okay, so so so, we, so, so I was in uh, Woodland Hills in Treatment Center at Sierra Life. Um, At a, the tell, them, wait, tell them who the who the house used to belong to. I don't know who, who did it belong to. I don't Fuck, remember. What's the little comedian fool? The little black comedian dude that wears a fur coat. What's his name? Kevin Hart. You don't know. Oh, no, Cat Williams. Williams. Cat Williams. It was Cat, Cat Williams. Williams. Was Cat Williams. Genius. Yes. A genius. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, I love Cat Williams so, so much. Yeah, he's got some great coats. Um, so so there's like crazy girls coming in in there too. One girl like admitted to me that she had like ripped someone's like heart out before in like a gang Ooh, thing. Harsh. Um Whoa, fuck. Yeah, it's like it was fucking gnarly, but like there's like all you know, there's characters, characters. There's about twenty different women there. Was her name, um, did, her name never... start, did her name start with a V? No. Okay. All right. Keep going. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where she's at now. But um but something just happened. I don't know if it was just but I mean we're all fucking sober, right? Um yeah. but you know, at the time I was like dating this dude and I was, I was the house manager too. So I'd always like sneak off though and go to his house. And then I would get um, phone calls from my roommate, Esther, who was like literally having like a meltdown because she thought that there was ghosts there. And like all the girls kept calling me, like saying that there's a motherfucking ghost there. And like, shit was like breaking things like that. You know what I mean? It was just like, it was weird. And I was like, you guys are all fucking tripping. But um, so I ended up leaving that dude's house. I came home. Esther's got like, oil like like rubbed up over her wall and like the shapes of crosses and no stuff way. like just like geeks the fuck out and i'm like you guys are all just fucking tripping you know um but i can tell you <laughs> that, that you can't you can't like you you can't i didn't see anything but you could feel it i don't know if you guys have felt ghosts but you feel it like in the pit of your fucking stomach and you feel like something is fucking there like i was i've never been scared to walk down that hallway but i was just like terrified and there's like rushes mm. of cool like air coming in like it was like some weird shit so that was like the and i you know it's sober but then hi like they were, i was always seeing shit you know there's like <laughs> fucking ghosts and spirits and yeah. cops chasing me and um all kinds of stuff but uh what about you guys ghost stories Love i've ghost never stories. seen one nah. no no i you, told man. mine i mean i had that i mean I had that that Hollywood Hills dog walker one, and then yeah, that's a yeah. fucking trip, man. That's amazing. And then that follow up, right? Yeah. What was that uh, follow up? Like that that what what was the follow up, Charlie? You remember? There was a there was a fan who reached out and 
thought that they had found Danny's dog walker. Yeah. And it was. Uh, oh, right. So fucked up, man. Yeah. I, I don't know. Wait, I, I looked what? into it for a little bit. I don't know if it matches up. Danny, did you think it looked familiar, that woman? Dude, yes. Yes. It was? Do you think it was? Yes. Oh, yes. Fuck. I think it's her for sure. I forgot all about that. Jesus <laughs> Christ. Wait. You guys have to pull together was... the pieces. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> I was, so, right, I'm so like, there's a dog walker. Yeah. Yeah, so I was just like, know. what are you supposed to talk? Well, maybe if you listen to the podcast, you would know. Damn. Hey. <laughs> Got her. Okay. Um, no, it was it, it was Walter Goggins' ex wife. That's right. Oh wow. right. Holy shit. Right. Walter Goggins. Sasha's like, this still does not mean all right. So I was in the Hollywood <laughs> in Hills my with my friend Marco Bayashi. You know, my friend that like the first dude I lost to fucking, you know, to an overdose. And we were doing a bunch of coke. We were sitting in his old Lincoln Town car and we see this uh and it's like 4 a.m. It's freezing cold outside. We both had like a sweater and a jacket and like a beanie on, you know, and we're doing blow. And it's like fucking freezing ass cold outside. And we see this woman, like we both look and we see somebody walking like a, a bunch of dogs, you know. It was like, you know, like the motherfuckers that have like the leash with like nine dogs on it, you know what yeah, I'm talking like about? A group yeah. of dogs. Yeah. 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 So yeah. she and this woman's dog wearing, walker. Yeah. And she's wearing like workout shorts and like a sports bra and just walking these dogs you know we see her coming like we see somebody coming and we both look and i look at mark and i'm like yo you see that and he goes yeah and then we look back and there's nothing there and we were like (laughs) what the fuck you know like we're like i mean maybe we've been awake for too long maybe we've done too much cocaine you know like who knows you know we're like whatever and then we he dropped me off we went home and um And we would always go and we would meet up at the, I was living, we were both living up in Laurel Canyon and we would go to the Canyon country store and like get sandwiches and fucking smokes and just hang out there on the front porch, you know? And, uh, and we get there and Tommy, the owner and like some other people were talking, they were like, Oh my God, like, I can't believe that happened. That's so sad. Like, man, like, Oh wow. Like how, you know? And we're like, well, like and we're sitting there like what the fuck are these fools talking about? You know? And finally, like, I was like, yo, what, what's sad? Like what the fuck? And they go, Oh man, you didn't hear. They're like, dude, the Laurel Canyon dog walker was murdered last night. Oh, I just got goosebumps. Yeah. No, but then one of our listeners found it. Dude, I read it. It's so pretty did heavy. you see her before? Do you saw her before it happened? She disappeared or it was the ghost of her that you saw? You know? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, no. who the fuck is going to be up at four in the morning wearing, like, we literally had three layers of clothes on. And she was, yeah. you know, I think it was her, just my, you know, personal, like, just my, what I think, you know, I it think it coast. was, it was her spirit or whatever, taking yeah. those dogs for one last walk, you know? Fuck, now I got chills too. Thanks. <laughs> 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 Great. Well, it, it said Next podcast. that Ghost was, story. you, you saw this Danny in the more, in the wee morning hours of that day. Yes. You went later in that same day. Before nightfall, you went within that same day to a to that store that I know exactly what you're talking about there uh-huh. that that little that place on Laurel right Canyon uh-huh. Laurel and, and Kirkland, you went yeah. there that day to go get a sandwich or whatever later mm-hmm. and and they said that the night before that girl had gotten killed yes that, come on I mean <laughs> like what the, I'm not a legend. I'm not a fucking detective, but I mean, the timeline, I mean, that's fucked up. That yeah. is fucking crazy. I love it. I love it, yeah. but I also, uh, just as don't for the record, it. don't want any interaction with anything <laughs> like that. I'm just putting it out there into the universe because right now I don't think I can handle it. Um, probably just shit my pants and run out in the street. Um, one anyway, one thing that uh, one oh, thing that Jack told us, Sasha, when oh he came God. on here, was uh, that was really cool. Was he was like a lot of the time we see these like spirits, you know, or whatever, or the energy, and it's like uh, people carry it with them, you know, like people that have been through certain shit, you know, they bring that energy with them, and that's why it comes to these places or whatever, right? Is that what he said, Charlie? Yeah, he like like a fo- like-, like a footprint in the sand. Yeah. So, I like, at how yeah. at the Sober Living, it could have just been, like, you know, like, because there's so many people coming through there that have had, like, super traumatic fucking things happen to them right. and super, you know, and, like, imagine the shit that they've seen and the shit they've done and the places they've been, you know? 
and they carry that energy with them. You know, they just take that and they bring it into there, you know? So obviously you're going to see some fucking freaky shit, you know? Yeah. Treatment's wild. What about West Adams? That place looked haunted as fuck. Oh yeah. To me. Oh yeah. Yeah. I don't know. That whole, like whole a, vibe of that place was. Yeah. Crazy. We got to get a, we got to get like uh maybe we got to get big John on here or something, you know, cause that fool, he was there. And and when they were there, they did like a Ouija board in the basement and they had some fucking Oof. some way out shit. Happen. Are you serious? They, uh, yeah. Don't fuck with a Ouija board. <laughs> like just doesn't Morrissey tell you enough Ouija board, Ouija board, yeah, whatever the hell else he says, but don't fuck with it. Oof. Seriously. When I was a tech, well, this isn't really like seeing shit, but like, this girl who worked at this alcoholic woman, dude, alcohol, people coming off of alcohol are fucking, that yeah. shit is fucking rough, you know? Yeah. Um, what this happened? Lady just, like, kept, just asking for a friend. This, this lady just, <laughs> this lady kept shitting, what? she kept shitting her bed, she kept shitting her bed every single time, and oh. I'm her fucking tech, Okay. So like I had to fucking clean that shit up. So that oh, was like probably no. like the most I think. Well, that sounds the like most a reason to keep drinking. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah. and she works for Disney too. I'm like, you just come and work for Disney. You should be it's the fucking happiest place on earth, you know. But she was fucking miserable, man. She was just in the crappiest place on earth. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Over. Sorry. I think she was. She was fine. I feel bad for my fucking self, dude. <laughs> 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 What's the weirdest? And then I thought she was doing it to fucking resent me because she was such a fucking, such a fucking bitch, dude. She was just like doing that shit on purpose, you know. I'll I'm make. Like, oh, all right, I'll straight up. I've motherfuckers, you know, like I've had not not that specifically happen, but I've had shit happen where I'll be like, "Yo, you better fucking clean that." And they're like, "What?" And I'm like, "You better pick that shit the fuck up and take like, you know, like I don't know what the fuck you think this is. I'll lose my job over it, you know. Like, yeah, I love my job, but like." There's a, yeah. it gets to a certain point where I'm like, yo, like if you want to make it in the, I'll spin it, you know, I'll be like, if you want to make it in the real world, you better start cleaning up your own messes. Cause I sure as hell ain't going to clean that <laughs> shit up. Dude. You're going to sleep in, you're going to sleep yeah. in shit bed again tonight. <laughs> Dude, I, when I was in the, when I was in the LA County, I don't know if you ever did this in there, Danny, but uh, you know, they would do shit like the food would be fucked up or something. So we just decide like, fuck these guys. And we'd jam up the toilets and flood the tier, you know? Uh huh. Oh yeah. The, everybody oh, would. Oh shit! No way. At the same time. Yeah, and we were doing that, and there's just fucking water dumping everywhere, you know. And um, oh wow, this dude Damien, he was funnier than shit. I wish I knew what happened to him. He's from Temple City, but he was my neighbor about a few doors down. He would just torture the nurses like they'd be coming by with the cart, and he'd like have his arms sticking out and <laughs> just be like, "Give it to me. Give me some fucking volume." <laughs> <laughs> what would he say? Like, give it to me. Give me some fucking Valium or Vicodin or whatever. You know, just fucking torture in the nurse. Oh, wow. Okay. Okay. And they were like wow. these little, like, little old ladies and shit. But the funniest one is we had flooded the tier that night. And she comes. He's like, hey, come on. Hey, come on. Just bring me some of them Vicodin. He goes, if you don't want to get your feet wet, just step on that log right there. And there's a big old turd. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, man. Dude. Fuck. I have to wear to bring you up, bring you up shit. Yeah. I had wow. this. Uh, <laughs> what are you doing? Chewing chocolate? Where'd you get it, dog? You dropped it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Danny, how about that time we used to fucking fuck with Sean Spencer and put we put dog shit in foil, I think, and gave it to him? Ooh, <laughs> what <was laughs> Wait, what happened? We used to fucking fuck with this kid, Sean, and we would like like always make fake heroin and stuff like that remember and and sell it to him we would just always fuck with this kid i don't know why like he's just like one of those people you just want to fuck with he's just like because he would always, out, like, so he would always steal from everybody and set people up and fucking he would like he was the worst like number one the worst he would always like pinch people's sacks he would hit you up and be like i have four hundred dollars and he gets there and he's got 12 you know like how do you go from four hundred dollars to 12 you know and like, i just got and, like robbed. he's like giving you pennies and shit yeah. i got i got burned the best but yeah we, we would fucking yeah we put like we, we one time we i think we took you can um put coca-cola like on like a like heat it up and it becomes like a tar like yeah. substance mm -hmm. and you can fucking playing that shit like you know so we did that to him before and i think we did literal dog shit too which was really sad i to think watch so i think he that. smoked dog i think he actually smoked 
actual dog shit. Yep, oh I forgot God. about that. <laughs> that yeah, can happen. That. Sometimes yeah. you smoke a little poo at least he didn't aim. At least he wasn't shooting up. You know? yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's probably not as good to shoot. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> but I'm trying small. to think, uh, man, what else? I mean, we got so many, you know? It's so You want to tell them the U-Haul fucking story? Oh, man. That still is so shocking to me. And now I tell people, I'm like, yo, if you have enough stuff, carrying around enough stuff, you will not get arrested. Because, okay, so Danny... <laughs> <laughs> Danny and I and another kid Danny and I and another kid I don't know who it was um, Alex. were helping some chicks Alex some Danny was fucking some chick I was so mad at that shit dude I was like Taylor the escort with the big booty was, yeah fuck you um <laughs> oh, damn. We were helping, her, helping her move helping her move some shit so she's got a whole fucking U-Haul full of stuff you know we're like cannot get from point A to point B without like stopping in some fucking shady little corner in the Hollywood Hills and like posted up, you know, with our fucking drugs just like out on the dashboard. I think you had like a fucking like a thing of black that was like Damn. big, like yeah. a quarter. No, well, no, 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 no. We were hel- I ha- we were helping her move and we got to like one to a storage unit. We filled up both of those units at that same storage place you were talking about that's down sunset, like by the sh- next door to the shakies, you know? And then she was yep. like, Hey, I need you to meet me over here with the truck. And I got into it and I was like, you know what? Fuck her and fuck this U-Haul. And we lived out of this U-Haul. Like that U-Haul was our home for a while, you know? Like not, you, know? you stayed in the U-Haul. I mean, I did a couple nights, I think. Damn, but, all right. I, mean, really <laughs> I take pride no, in it, shit. About the time, I'm thinking about the time that the fucking cops rolled up on oh, us, yeah. right? We're all fucking passed out. Like Danny got fucking out. rig yeah. in his arm, like in the front seat another kid and i'm just like you know smoking foils in the back seat in like a sleeping bag no, you, or no you were in the cab you were like in the back of the truck you know yeah no i was like yeah. in the back like in the back um not back seat no um <laughs> and then the cops roll up on us and dude you know the whole fucking shebang goes down and we're like dude we're fucked like well, we keep in mind this isn't my u-haul us. I don't have a driver's license. The only thing I did right was I took the keys out and I put them on the dash. So they couldn't have said that anybody was actually driving the U-Haul because right. there was no keys in the ignition, you know? I mean, we were all sleeping, you know? Yeah. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, I mean, Danny, you can take it from here. I mean, like, fucking cops come. We thought we were for sure, for sure fucking going down, you know? But, like, they just let us fucking go at the end our minds were fucking blown. We're like, dude, what? And it's just, he didn't want to do the fucking paperwork of like, Wait, oh, all the wow. that is that what it was? All I thought it was, he got so another good. call. I thought they got a call about something else. I don't know. I don't remember, you know? <clears throat> I think it was the paperwork. That's but do you remember, experience. do you remember I walked off? Cause they had cuffs on you <laughs> and Alex and I was like, fuck this. I'm out, you know? And I literally just dude, left. I was so fucking mad. I was so mad. Just, if this motherfucker does not go to jail with me right now, I'm going to be so fucking mad. <laughs> yeah. Wait, no, no. But the worst part is, is I left for like an hour and a half, you know? And I like walked around. I got high. I hid my, the dope that I had on me somewhere. And then I came back to see if they were still there. Uh-uh. <laughs> and and we twist, were all still They mad. were, you yeah. know? Uh-huh. Yeah. And these fools were sitting there handcuffs. They were like, where'd you go? I'm like, Oh, I want to go get cigarettes. They're like, you can't leave to get cigarettes. I'm like, I don't know. Nobody told me that, you know? <laughs> so then they put, so know, now nobody, they put cuffs. Nobody and, yeah, told me that. Just playing dumb, you know? <laughs> so now they throw cuffs on me. And I'm like, well, great. Now oh, I'm fucking going down man. with these fools, you know? Fuck. But yeah, they let us go. Yeah, they let us go. And then I gave her back the U-Haul. I gave her back the U-Haul a few weeks after that. I ran into her one day and she was like, what the fuck? You have my U-Haul. You've been, you know? And I was like, you know what? Fuck you and your dusty ass U-Haul. And I just threw the keys at her and left and left all my shit in the back of it. Did she get so We had one of those. I don't know. I want to find her, you know? Fuck. Taylor. I don't know her last name or nothing. Yeah. That might not even be a real name. Yeah. She's had a big old butt. That's all I know. <laughs> <laughs> bounce a quarter. You bounce a quarter off of that house. motherfucker. She, bounce. She, she, she always made me sit in the hallway whenever I went to her house. Like, <laughs> she would never let me come in the house. Like, no, no, no. Sorry. You can't come in. I'm like... She did, I, they wouldn't let me in, you know. <clears throat> and then I got my foot in the door, and I was like, "I'm not fucking this up. This is too good." <laughs> um, <clears throat> no, uh, yeah, I threw the keys out. Oh, you remember when we got we we had a 
you know those like ceramic jaguar tables you know yeah. like where it's like the table yeah we had one of those that we found one night and that was in the back of it you know like there was like a couch a jaguar fucking table with, with the, the glass, glass like coffee. yes uh, in the back of the u-haul it was nuts because it was tight because we were like you know you're a tweaker you love like dumpster diving and shit i was like yo we could just pull up and load the stuff in our now home you know like in whatever in our portable house and we'd go unload it at the storage and just go get more stuff you know fuck that was great yeah dude dumpster diving yeah i told i told him about that dumpster diving story with the fucking uh, the ramen place i used to love a nice dd at what place the the ramen what are the chances of that happening yeah i'm like out dumpster diving by myself like by the server, like by that little theater or whatever. By the Vista. And I find a fucking, yeah, the Mar Vista. And I find a fucking wallet in there. And like, this is like, I've been dumpster diving a lot. You know, I've never found a wallet like with cards, everything. And I'm cards, like, cash, ID, everything. Like, God, God loves me. Like, oh, this is fucking <laughs> amazing. You know, I'm like, we went to first stop, 99 cent store. We're fucking, you know, what did I spend like 50 bucks on like sugar, candy? I think that's like literally all we ate, all the speaker shit that I needed. You know, you don't need an ID. You don't need to like any put a pin or anything. It's fine. And then the second thing that we went to do was go eat at Silver Lake Ramen because fuck yeah, we're we're eating a feast. You know, we haven't eaten in like and we years, took Noah so. and we took Noah rest in peace with us. You know, because yeah, he was selling dope, yep. and I was like, oh, I'm just gonna get him some. I'm gonna get this full some f- some dinner, and then he'll take care of us with some dope. You know, but go ahead, keep telling the story. <laughs> you know, so we like got our food. You know, we're like in a. a weird looking bunch you know i'm like 88 pounds danny's literally probably wearing my my spandex pants because he was really into that at that time i think um and then noah's just like wears like lavish hats and like masks and stuff like that out in public i don't know he's just like you know i have one of his like kimonos he's very like fruity and fabulous and he's fucking awesome um but so we're all sitting there like this is not a normal group of people like how you know what i mean like probably haven't showered in a long time either um you know, go to pay and I hand them the card and, you know, they leave and they're like, you know, ringing up about to like, you know, swipe it or whatever. And then they, they look at it and it ends up being the fucking owners or one of the, someone that works there, his fucking credit card, his no fucking way. card. Yeah. yeah. Was, yes. so the top, oh yeah. The this top is a Silver called, Lake Ramen. Yes. Yep. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, you know, they're like, you need to stay here and wait for the cops to come. And we're all, fuck no we just like booked it we just all ran in different directions you know like what's <laughs> and, the then we, and then i remember at? we got a cab because we had one credit card left and we ran up over by noah's and we called the cab and we're like we got to get the fuck out of here what happened to noah he od'd man so he uh he didn't know d he i think he got a he got like some type of like blood infant like he got what's that shit called like when you get like the blood infection you know oh uh, right but he, he was, was really man, into shooting up crack i think towards the end wasn't he or was it i don't know but that kid's house do you remember that kid's house yeah i like, talked about i've it never the- seen yeah i've never seen so many dirty needles or he would like love to spray his blood on the walls yeah, yeah. so he's just like oh, oh, and yeah. his mom is living his mom is living upstairs like his parents live there so if they just go down 12 steps like he's got like galleries of different colored blood and like weird you know what i mean just like fuck me i've never seen anyone look like that and so and gator- yeah and is yeah and bottles of fucking gatorade Pits. filled with pee everywhere maybe mm-hmm. like a hundred bottles what, down what there, neighborhood you know? was it dude this is up in silver lake in like the silver lake mm-hmm. hills no way yeah up on like it's uh like elevado yeah. you know where elevado is at no it's like if you go up those stairs like they go like behind like the seven mares or whatever, you know, behind oh, that yeah. seafood place, like up in the hills, right up there, like at the very top of the hill, oh, okay. like beautiful house. Yeah. He was, a, you remember, uh, you remember, uh, I would make this full, so we would get these Airbnbs, you know, and then we would, it would be like the last day and we'd have to leave and I didn't want to pay the cleaning fee. So I'd hit up no and I'd be like, Hey, I'll, <clears throat> I'll shoot you like a half gram or like whatever. I'll get you well. If you, uh, if you could, um, if you clean for us, you know, and he'd be like, sure. And he would just show up and he would mop and vacuum and wash all the dishes and do everything. <laughs> and one day we're sitting there. <clears throat> this was the day that uh, Steve OD'd outside of that one place. Remember that? Steve got no. out and he got loaded and he OD'd. Yeah, he OD'd yeah, all the time. That happened. Steve yeah. was the one who he yeah, OD'd all like the 30 time. times. <laughs> yeah. 
I would just slap him and shit, you know. I was like, I've been waiting for this moment. Bam, bam. <laughs> I give him a, like, I give him a solid black eye, you know. Like, don't if you're listening at home, that's not what you do when somebody overdoses. Have some Narcan on you. Hit him with the Naloxo Narcan. Do not beat somebody. I mean, like the that slapping kind of worked though. It kind of worked. Cold yeah, but water, he didn't overdose. Clapping. He would just like fall out, you know. Yeah, he would. But uh, so one day we're sitting at this house. That one that had all the wigs at, you know, that one that had like the lined up wigs. The one that was mm-hmm. like an Echo Park. And so uh, that's the PCB there. laundry story, right? Yeah. No, well, the PCB know. laundry was it a diff? That was a different wig, you know. Different but wig. This, okay. house, <laughs> this house had a, just a bunch of wigs on. Like this lady maybe did costumes or like hair and like she did something in theater and she just had a bunch of like weird like you know Where fucking old wigs. Yeah, Echo Park, right by like Chango, where the coffee shop was at. Oh, okay. Yeah, and we were there for like two months. It was really cool. It was a cool little spot. It was like a little garden. There was like four little like cottages, and we rented one of them for for a while too. And so we're cleaning it up, and uh, and I call Noah over to come and clean the spot, and we're sitting there, and we're like packing our shit and trying to like get high enough so we can like make our move to the next place and figure out where we're gonna get there or how we're gonna get and where we're gonna go, and uh, and all of a sudden we just hear this. I hear this beautiful voice singing opera, like at the top of their lungs, you know? And I was like, what the fuck is going on? Like, who's playing that shit? And I remember walking into the kitchen and Noah's just in there washing the dishes, singing fucking opera. Nuh-uh. I was like, what fucking uh, planet is this? Do you remember that, Sash? Yeah. yeah. He, had the mo- he had the most amazing voice. He Such was like, a beautiful voice. Oh, it was a dinosaur head that he would always wear. He would always wear a dinosaur head, He would always wear a, head, wear a yeah. giant, like a T-Rex head everywhere that he went. Yeah. No way. Man, he grew up with it. He was really good friends with Nick Angelo. And, what? Yeah. He was really good friends with uh, Nick Angelo and Eli and those dudes. He grew up with them. Oh, really? Mm. Yeah. Oh. We go to those stairs every year What's on Eli his birthday. Go- What's up? Eli Extra Large? No, 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 no. no, no. Oh, no. okay, cool. Yeah. I just our buddy. We go to those stairs, Sasha, every year on his birthday and uh, – we light a little candle and like smoke cigs and tell stories about him every year. It's kind of cool. Um, Those stairs. Yeah, this fool was so nuts. He would, he would line up cars by his house. And he's living up there by his parents' house. And he was like so freaked out that he didn't want to like keep walking in and out of the house to sell dope. So he would have like eight or nine people line up. And then he would just walk out and like would one by one would just serve no them. Way. Yeah, and then would come back to his, you know, parents' house, and the neighbors would be like, "What is this fool doing?" And then at one point, he posted a photo on his Facebook of him with like a BB gun, all like strapped up, you know, all like gangster style. Yeah. And somebody reported it to the cops, so the cops came and fucking raided his house because they thought he was like some big wet arms no dealer. You know? <laughs> yes. Oh no. Oh, rest in peace, Noah. Rest in peace. He was such a nice fucking kid, too. He let us stay with him when we didn't have anywhere to go, you know? Fuck, he was great. Yeah, I still have his kimono. I use use it every day, pretty much. Mm -hmm. I stole that shit. I'm such an asshole, dude. I fucking robbed him of his kimono, and he ended up fucking... Oh, but I get to remember him, you know? It's crazy. Yeah. You guys, I have fucking bad news. My my AirPods will... I don't know. I think we're good anyway. Yeah. Yeah, well, I'm down to fourteen percent. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah I, we got some good good stuff in there. I just have one more question, Sasha. That's how how did you get out of all of this and get to where you are today? Um, so the craziest of the craziest motherfuckers that we hung out with, Chris you might have to blank that name out later, ended up getting sober and silk too. Um silk was like bottom of the barrel, like fucking street urchin is what we used to call him. Right. Um uh, both of those guys get sober. Silk had 90 days. Chris had like six months or nine months or something. You know, Chris picked me up, brought me to a fucking meeting and was like, hey, are you interested in going to treatment? And that was at like CRLA. And I was like, at the point where I'm like, yeah, I mean, I can't keep living like this. You know, I'm like living with a fucking another boyfriend that I, you know, adopted and he's a drug dealer too. Just so happens like that was, you know, my thing. And um yeah. Yeah, but it took a it took a while. It took like three three or four weeks, maybe a month, you know, before like I literally so I stopped shooting up uh like three months prior to me getting into treatment, but I was smoking meth and heroin off of foil. So I'm like, Yeah, I'm doing a fucking great job. I'm not shooting up anymore, like I'm so proud of myself. Um but it's actually like the foil that yeah. smoking so much of a foil that my lungs 
like pretty much collapsed. Oh, um, oh. So oh. yeah. So I was so funny. I was like on. Yeah. I was on Ooh. the phone doing an intake call to Sierra Leone with Reno, and Reno, you know, he's got this raspy voice. He's like, "Hey." He's like, yo, you need to go get that checked out, girl. You need to go to the hospital. I'm like, this motherfucker's got, like, the craziest voice. And he's like, <laughs> telling me to go to the hospital because I sound crazy. I'm like, fuck, no, I'm not going. And then went to sleep, whatever, kept using. And the next morning, I woke up, literally couldn't breathe. Had to take urgent, you know, the fucking, uh, you know, sirens, everything. The fucking paramedics had to come, took me to the hospital. And you know, I was there for a few days, like, on a breathing machine. And I was like texting danny from my my uh google voice number trying to get him to fucking drop off dope you know danny somehow like didn't come through that time thank god you know yeah. like if you did come through like i probably would have never fucking went treatment um and then just from there i was just like dude this is it's like vacation like you know yeah. like sterile i was like fucking baller ass house yeah. like in the hill like you know, I got meals. I got, you know, it was, it was fucking Dude, chill. You're lucky, so I I was just ready, you're lucky you know? it didn't kill you, Sasha. My friend was smoking heroin on foil. And some, for some reason, something to do with the foil, it fried his brain. It killed him. Wow. He went crazy first for about yeah. two months and then he died from it. I see aluminum probably, right? Maybe? Something in the, mm -hmm. yeah, something with the aluminum. Yeah. It, it's fucking. You were out. using, yeah. I mean, the I smoked aluminum. Because yeah. they used to make it out of tin, obviously. Yeah. Thus the name tin foil. But mm. yeah, man, it's aluminum. I mean, that shit will fucking, I guess, zap you. Yeah. And then it was, I mean, it's crazy because it was like the stars had aligned where, like, Is Chris, Chris Collins, Collins was sober. Yeah. Yeah, he's alive. He has his third kid on his way, on the way. Oh, cool. We're going to bring him on here. Great. We're going to bring him on. He yeah. has me and him. I mean, he's fucking a nut, you know, but he's, I love him, you know? Do I know and him? So he's got the best I was talking to him too. about, you might, because he was sober for a while. He had like four years before and he would like build mopeds and shit. He was in that band, Mickey and the Mouses. He was a drummer for him. You built, would know him. If you'd see him, you'd know him. If he built mopeds, i know him because Jeff Johnson owned that moped shop and everybody went there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. but uh no and he built you know and then he and then he got strung out again and he started selling mopeds to fools in a like sober cats and he would sell a moped and have somebody give him a down payment and would sell it to somebody else you know and no then would like way. list it on craigslist and would get cashed out so he'd sell one moped like three or four times That's great. he's out of his mind you know Damn. but uh he got sober and he was in that treatment center so like then he, he, yes yes got then he got silk you know blake who's like now homeless <laughs> Who's like a homeless dude that I know that lives on the street in like in Echo Park now, you know, like off of Alvarado. And uh, he, he got sober. Then Sasha got into the place and Silk called me. He was in Colorado because there was a house there. And he called me and he was like, dude, he's like, when you're tired of the Sean Spencers, that one dude we were talking about that we made smoke dog shit. And he goes, and the fucking uh, and the Steves, you know, and all these scumbags call Chris and fucking give this shit a chance, you know. And uh, and it was like there was just something about the honesty in his voice and like it gave me that little glimmer of fucking hope and i was like well fuck if this motherfucker can be sober if sasha mm -hmm. can be fucking sober and i was like fuck it you know like what do you know like what's the worst thing that could happen you know and then i got yeah. into fucking you know and he's still sober we no dude so silk 90 days in was like getting transferred to a sober living took a greyhound bus down here copped a bunch of dope at the fucking trains at the bus stop did the dope overdose slid his wrist and has been homeless ever since you know oh, i think you told me but if it didn't that. yeah if it didn't line up like it was like you know it's like yeah. I, like you know they say like it's like the seconds and inches you know like yeah. if he wasn't there and he didn't fucking call me when he got that one phone call at his 60 days mm -hmm. like i would not fucking be sitting here right now yeah. if sasha didn't get in there and have that shit happen i would not be fucking sitting here right now you know did i i prayed and i don't pray I've never prayed in my life, but I prayed for Danny to get sober every single fucking night that I was in there. It is so crazy. crazy. And then like, I finally found out that you're coming. I think it was like when I had 60 days or when yeah. I had 90 days, my mind was just like fucking blown. It's a miracle that we didn't skip treatment and go use together because yeah. we had been doing that for three or four years. You know, mm -hmm. it's like something in us both. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. We were ready. Fucking, you know, we were ready. And he had no teeth when he got, got, got sober. And a red mohawk. <laughs> yeah, big it facts. Like, dude, so crazy. Uh, you, uh, yeah, just from there. Just like, fuck, I got, two, I got two more. Fuck, I got two more stories that would be good. We could maybe like drop them in a bonus episode or something. I don't know. I can't. I, I want you to tell the Howard Johnson story, the one in San Diego with the fucking cockroach. Remember? 
Oh, the the fucking hotel. Yeah. And then the other one was the, the one where my tooth got knocked out that night by that fool from fucking the gang that I will not name. I don't remember the gang one. I never remember anyone getting beat up, mm. but okay, the hotel one. So I would always go down to mom and dad's when I was trying to get sober, which I do a quick before my headphones die out. Um, and, you know, Danny's like supportive of it, you know, whatever. I'm still in love with him. He's like, I'm going to come down and come see you. I'm sober. Da, da, da. You know, um, he gets the fucking hotel like across the street from my parents house because yeah, they wouldn't at. they wouldn't even let me into their house you know they oh knew hell better. no my dad still fucking hates you i'm pretty sure i'm just kidding he <laughs> doesn't hate you but he's still like i get still, it like, you know Ew, daniel you know um but you know so i'm like you know i'm always sneaking out i'm always having people from la come down and freaking see me um you know when i was like at my parents house i just wasn't ready you know um but daniel fucking <laughs> you can take take it from here so we get a room at the at, at the fanciest hotel in town, the Howard Johnson Inn. <laughs> in I Oceanside. remember Howard Johnson. <laughs> yeah. In Oceanside. And we stay there. And I'm telling Sasha that like, no, I'm just, you know, like I'm, I'm sober and whatever. And I go into the bathroom and I spend an hour in the bathroom because I'm getting high. And then finally she's like... Well, you know, whatever. Give me like, some of that. What's up? <laughs> yeah, she, over yeah, yeah. So then we're, we're getting high and we see a roach in the room. You know, and there was a roach in the fucking, I was like, oh, hell no. And I wasn't like, we need to leave here. You know, I was like, hey, I'm going to trap that roach and I'm going to take him <laughs> to the manager and show him and then get a free room for another night. You know, that was my best thinking. No. So, way. yeah. So I have like a little weed jar or something. I trap the fucking roach, the living roach in the weed jar. I bring him down and I show the manager and I go, Hey, there's roaches in the room. And they go, yeah, no, there's not. And I go, no, yes, there is. Here's the roach in the jar. And this motherfucker has audacity to say, Oh, I've seen this before. You just brought your own cockroach, you know? And I'm like, what? Like, so I go back up to the room and I'm fucking heated. And I'm like, Sasha, we got to get our shit. We're leaving. Fuck this place. You know, like, I can't believe he he would say that, you know? And I was like, wait, fuck that. I'm going to go try this again. You know? So I go back down and I walk down to the fucking lobby and I come in. And there's nobody there. There's no manager. There's no fucking desk clerk, nobody. And I think to myself, well, if they're not going to refund us or give us another room, I'm going to just refund myself. So I literally hopped the counter. I worked in retail long enough to know how to fucking, (laughs) how to open a register without a key, crack open the register, pull all the money out of the register find a craigslist ride share going back to la like in an hour you no know way. and i'm like sasha pack your shit we're going back up to la yeah and she runs away from her parents house and we go back to la for another run no fucking way wow. yeah you're incredible Danny. yeah that was wild <laughs> i mean you were a fucking freak of nature <laughs> hey and then i lose my wallet in sobriety and i'm like i can't believe this happened to me <laughs> <laughs> but you never found that wallet daily no nah, no it's gone oh did you get a new one yet or do you need one no i got a new wallet oh, okay fuck i forgot yeah, to I got a bunch. Wait, when you guys were getting sober were you still engaged how did how did that end danny sasha yeah oh i think sasha's airpods died uh um, uh, right. um Jay, I think the engagement just ended when we fucking pawned our fucking engagement ring to get methadone. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, that was about it, Chalooch. That's about when it ended. I got four percent left on my thing, so <laughs> I'm gonna. <laughs> I think we All should right, end well, it thank, here. Thank you, Sasha. <laughs> thank you, Sasha. Wherever you are, thank. I, I think. I think Sasha, you can hear us. You, we can't hear you. you. <laughs> Thank you. Love you. Bye. Thank you so much. Bye, guys. And thanks to the audience for putting up with our uh, technical glitches. We love you, and we will see you back as soon as we can. Bye. Thanks for listening to another episode of It's All Bad. It's All Bad. Later, guys. Laters.